Welcome to this week's episode of Campbell and Jones Meet the Monsters, the show where we chart the cinematic journey of the great horror monsters. <laughs> you know, since we switched... You're right, you're right. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes. Where we take the monsters by the hand you know, and we walk with them down the road. Yep. That was that was the other one I was testing out. Was that, that was the alternate. Was We take them by the hand and we walk them down the road. <laughs> I like that um but yes we are uh falling in the footsteps of dracula the frankenstein's monster wolfman the mummy and every, um, every and once now, in a while they the phantom of the opera. Accent. <laughs> every now and then the phantom yeah and the occasional gill man yeah yeah i don't think he makes an appearance in this studio's movies no they never had a gill man no they had a gorgon because they're cowards <laughs> they did have a gorgon though <laughs> they did have a gorgon they have uh, plenty of other stuff that we didn't get. <laughs> well, I'm John Campbell. The other voice you're hearing is that of Brendan Jones. We are the titular Campbell and Jones uh, who are Ooh. meeting the monsters. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's nice to be meeting them in new guises. Yes. Um, and, and in color. Uh, and, and classy uh, like all Brits are. Kind of. Here and there classy and here and there are like scandalous and who be sure i'll say this week we've way up the scandalous stuff from uh, the lurid nature from last week's episode yes we did um we went we critics, went a little bit there this week we're like fuck it we're painting this thing in blood and that was uh it, it is true hammer very quickly saw the writing on the wall with the success of of curse of frankenstein and this they're like oh wow this is what people want and they course corrected. They were actually after this movie dropping things that they already had lined up as far as their production schedule. We're like, fuck those dramas, more monsters yeah. because the money was coming in, and they're like, oh, yeah. this is what the people want. And they said, we do like money. They did, <laughs> just like a Brit. Yeah. Well, I don't know. What that <laughs> you know that old stereotype about Brits loving money? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I apologize to yeah, our British listeners. That's such an outdated. Are... Yeah, I don't. I you know, look if anyone look if there are any British listeners, please write in. I would love to know if we have anyone from England listening at the show. Actually, I would too, and especially you know, write us and tell us what your experience with these were as well. I have one British friend here in our lovely city of Portland. Hi, Mark, if you're listening. <laughs> um, and he's a delight. And we used to at work when we should have been doing other things would talk about these things. And of course I would always be pestering him about his childhood experience with things like Dr. Who, which was very different for yeah. us over here as far as when we got them. And also things like the hammer films. And he's like, Oh yeah. And of course it's totally ubiquitous uh, right. over there. And that was similar to here. Like what would be on Saturday afternoon TV or something would be, uh, you know, these classics from, from hammer um, in an edited fashion, of course. But yeah. um we can't yeah, I mean, I'm I'm just I'm just jealous. Uh, I think maybe I'm jealous of people who grew up when these were coming out. Uh, yeah, because I mean, how awesome would that be? Absolutely. I mean, I definitely am like uh, I, I'm somebody who who straightens up in his chair when I see something from England a little bit. Like, hmm, this is going to be of a higher quality. That's not yeah. always the case, but I definitely no. have that being a kid <laughs> growing up watching BBC shows and mm -hmm. British comedy and these movies. It was always like, well, they. They've got a, a little bit of a step on us with this kind of stuff. What was always apparent, um, and you know, Hammer is not the BBC, but it is it is sort of a of a thing for this the genre stuff. You always knew exactly what you said. It might be pace different, uh, but you knew the quality would be very high, mm -hmm. but you also knew the budget would be very low. Yes. Because generally yeah. speaking, even these hammer films, I mean, this was you know made for nothing and do they make it look as handsome as possible yes i think that's the thing uh, that I, I watching this one in particular um because we are talking uh about 1958's the horror of dracula this week mm -hmm. um watching this one in particular i was thinking about that i'm like there's no these are cheap movies and so are universal but the effort is so different the 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 craftsmanship is so much higher here that they're like we're going to do everything we can to make as good a movie with this much money. Whereas at Universal, yeah. they're like, who, who cares? Yeah. Well, towards the end. I mean, yeah, early down days. the stretch, down the stretch. Yeah. 
yeah, early days they were giving James Whale yes. pretty big budget. Well, going. that's it Look. exactly. But yeah, once the what basically uh, you know once the 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 regime change happened there exactly, and then it was just sort of like oh, just use that stuff from that that Mayan movie we just yeah. did, and that's your Egyptian temple. And I went, wait, that doesn't. Oh well, it's free. Okay, we'll just use this then. Um, but no, I, I there's a lot in that book that I'm reading about the Hammer films about how proud their set decorator, like a one guy for yeah. most of these classic films, he was very proud of the fact that they were redressing literally the same three sets over and over yeah. and over again, and and with very few examples, could you point to it and go? Oh yeah, it's just the same room. It you know it's and, it's amazing because watching this, nothing in this feels like anything from Frankenstein, really. No, yeah. Uh, so uh, he did. He he took great care. That's the thing is on a budget, these people all chipped in and they did their very best. Yeah. For movies that you know this isn't high art, but How they dare didn't want to just it wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> these movies are the finest example of cinematic <laughs> artistry. Uh, <laughs> uh, not quite, but um, no. But they are yeah. they are made very sincerely by people who are putting all of their best into it. You know, it's really word. Yeah, these are these are made with love, which is very different than what we came to find in a lot of Universal. Uh, Indeed, you have prepared some background on horror of Dracula. I do and did. <laughs> I guess the answer would have been I did. Sorry, <laughs> but um, I love those. How I much you committed to? I do. I do. I do. I, do. I will be your lawfully wedded wife. <laughs> oh, blessed day that you asked me here on the podcast. No, um, I've always yeah, assumed I'd be married on a podcast. Um, I yeah, just, I just, that's going to happen. It's going to be a live stream, probably. Um, yeah, ladies, you won't even have to touch this guy. <laughs> he is ready to be wed on a podcast. Yep. Um, but I did. I prepared some stuff. I'm enjoying. Uh, reading about the the studio the films and yeah. the actors themselves right, well, so, well give us some background on horror of dracula i'm gonna do that right now uh so on may 20th 1958 the hammer films production of dracula had its uk premiere accompanied by a giant poster of christopher lee hovering over a nightgown clad melissa stribling with fake blood pumped from a tube and flowing down her neck. <laughs> that is so badass. I love it. And I would I would give up everything I own to have that poster. I would with too. the co- accompanying fake blood tubes. Oh yeah. Um that would be it amazing. was then re- <laughs> it was then released in the US on May twenty fifth as Horror of Dracula on a double bill with homegrown cinematic opus, The Thing That Couldn't Die. A film which sadly we will not be discussing on this podcast. And the quality is um, just the same. Um, just the same. The Americans did just as good with the, than the Brits. Uh, but wherever it was released and under whichever title, Horror of Dracula was a hit for Hammer, the little British studio that could. Audiences devoured the latest screen adaptation of Stoker's Vampire Count. The critics, though, were mostly appalled. Said the Observer's critic... I regret to hear that it is being shown in America with emphasis laid on its British origin and feel inclined to apologize to all decent Americans for sending them a work in such sickening bad taste. <clears throat> and over... This guy's the calling Daily it a front to his country. This British film has an X certificate. This is too good for it. There should be a new certificate. S for sadistic or, or just... <laughs> D for disgusting. <laughs> I must add that the film has been effectively produced and is well acted. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Whoa. A complete no. 180 at the I, end there. I know. Uh, and it certainly was uh, and uh, well acted by Hammer's repertory company of players, most noticeably the preeminent pair of Peter Cushing and the man I'd like to talk a little bit about today, mm. Christopher Lee. Mm, Christopher Lee. By the time, yeah, I know. By the time Lee first slipped on the cloak and fangs, the character of Dracula had already been portrayed on film nearly 20 times by different actors around the globe. And yet, of those who have portrayed the King of the Vampires, Christopher Lee easily ranks at the top, fighting for supremacy, only with the originator of the iconic role, Bela Lugosi. Uh, these are two very different takes on the oh, same yes. character. Oh, yes. and, and these were also two very different men. Quite different, um, yes. yes. 
Sir Christopher Frank Carandini Lee's life story is so full of WTF tidbits <laughs> that I'm not going to attempt a full biography here. I know about some Inst of the World War II stuff. Oh, my God. Yeah. Instead, as we cover his many Hammer films, mm -hmm. uh, I'll offer up a sprinkling of factoids Excellent. about this literal giant of a man as we go. And we'll have plenty of opportunity because he's in, like, all of these almost? <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Uh, not really the Frankensteins, but there you go. No, no, he dropped out of uh, that So today's... One. Okay. So today's tidbits... Well, let me try that. Today's tidbits <laughs> uh, are... Uh, Lee was six foot five inches yes. and was often told in his early career that he was much too tall to be an actor. <laughs> oh, I just love the idea of, oh, no. No, no. <laughs> uh... Have you ever thought of shaving down your shins or calves? We can't put this guy in a frame. <laughs> Look at him, he's huge. We don't have enough apple boxes for all of your co-stars. I ah, know. <laughs> there's just, been a shortage the... of apple boxes since the war. He walks in for an audition and there's like, no, 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 thank no, you. No, no. <laughs> Turn out. right around there, mate. Uh, Lee's he ends up maternal... making like 500 movies though. Um, <laughs> he does. I know, <laughs> fuck those people. Yeah, uh, Lee's maternal great grandmother had been an accomplished opera singer, and he himself had a great love of singing. He and Hammer makeup man Phil Leakey would sing operatic duets during his long hours in the makeup chair. Oh, that's... that sounds both that's... charming and it probably was also very irritating. <laughs> yeah, I love that though. How quaint. Yeah. I know, very. Um, his parents divorced when he was only four, and his mother's second husband was the uncle of future author Ian Fleming, mm. making the James Bond creator Lee's step cousin. Lee would, of course, eventually play Francisco great Scaramanga. Bond villain Garamanga in The Man with the Golden Gun, a film in which he bellows the greatest opening line in any James Bond movie. Hell, any movie, period, greatest opening line, which was knick -knack, Tabasco! Tabasco. <laughs> I love it. knick -knack, Tabasco he is how you is kick that movie off. probably in my top five Bond villains. I love Scaramanga. So great. And that movie is is shaky. Some of it works, some of it doesn't. Yes, but it's he, like many Bond movies, awesome. it sags in the middle like nobody could ever imagine. And it's a, you know, uh, it's a it's a Roger Moore, but no. it's uh, now. I, is, know, I know, I know, I know. This is I'm, where, uh, this is where uh, I and I was going to bring up Roger Moore because, as uh, look, I love love Sean Connery mm, very much. I know, but more, more is more, your bond. more is my bond. And on that same note, I love love Bela Lugosi, but Christopher Lee is my Dracula. Oh God, that is where we part ways. And actually, on both, that's good. We need th that for balance. Yeah. Um, Bela Lugosi is the greatest Dracula. I um, like in the. In, I feel very similar about the Connery versus Moore thing. I totally recognize they were the starting place. The iconography comes from them, but for me, and and a lot of it too. Lee also is in favor of, of, over Lugosi. He has advantages over Lugosi simply because I've seen Lee play Dracula so many more times as well that right. I definitely just time in the cape is on Lee's side. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And I would say that um, had Lugosi existed in a different decade, mm -hmm. um, had he had the exact same freedom that uh, Lee has, and even Lee is, this is still early days. They are really, that's why those reviews were coming in like that, because they were poking the bear a little bit going, yeah. how much can we get away with? How much can we get away with? If Lugosi had had fangs, if Lugosi mm -hmm. had been able to fully sexualize his performance yeah. and get on those ladies, um, I don't think we would have this discussion because Lugosi would fucking own it. But sure. he was from a more genteel time, and his performance well, is so stage-bound. Yeah. And, in, and it's reserved. In watching this movie, I think just because like the leash is off a little bit here, every time you see Dracula with his crazy eyes and blood on it all over his mouth. I'm like, Oh, I know. Yeah, I, I know. And plus we are watching these in this chronological order to where, again, we've seen much worse. Oh my God. Yeah, we've yeah, seen, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is 2020. We've seen unbelievable stuff gotten away with in horror films. We've seen, but we're everything. watching. <laughs> 
but by that point we've seen everything yeah uh <laughs> it's it's uh it's still refreshing ish and shocking ish to be in the frame of mind of we've gone from 1931 and now we're in 1958 yeah. and it's so drastic and you're like damn yeah and and again uh, the blood looks absolutely fake but i'm still going god damn look at that stuff yeah yeah and i'm, I'm liking that yeah uh i think also lee is hampered here a little bit um we'll talk about it but i do think that um the movie doesn't serve him very well and it's sheer force of chris Lee's awesomeness that carries this again oh, yeah. peter cushing comes off so much better oh, in this cushing, because man. he has actual dialogue right i mean they do want to play well we'll get into it they do want to play dracula very mysterious in this movie very much yes. around he's almost like the shark from jaws in this thing Yes, and actually, strangely, that is the, you know, not, not, spoiler alert, the other Lee Dracula films um, keep the same idea. Lee d never gets a lot of dialogue as the character. He mm. is a presence, yeah. which drove him insane, apparently. He he was, like he said, it's a mixed blessing. He was very grateful for the Dracula films. At the same time, he's like going, they just didn't give me a lot to do. I yeah. try to throw an actual dialogue from stoker like he would just add dialogue to scenes and they go that's not in the script thanks chris you know just just do the glare <laughs> with the red contacts thanks yeah. um so we'll come up against that again sure. and it is just the fact that lee is owning it, it that his, you still uh, he's still his unbelievably screen presence impressed. cannot be denied i mean it's just it like it's just and if someone out there is trying to deny it john and i will have a word with you we will come to our Respective homes, knock yeah. on the door. Yeah. We will speak to you about it at a respectful distance, wearing a mask. Yeah, but we will have words with you. And those words won't be pleasant. I'll just say they that they won't. They won't be. I don't know why you've gotten on a bus or even a plane and come to see us just for us to lay into you about how wrong you are. It's a costly tongue lashing. That's for sure. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, speaking of the the blood and such in this movie, let's talk about this poster oh, yeah. that definitely wants to emphasize that. Mm -hmm. Um, a, a more a more minimalist poster than we've seen previously on this show. Yes, this is the poster for, the, and we're looking at the one on IMDb, and the mm -hmm. first one that comes up is the U.S. release poster, yes. which is the lady in it does remind me of what we'd seen before. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know who, what pr releasing company was in charge of making this. Uh, this is a uh, Universal International release. Oh, that's right. They did actually act as its distributor yeah, in the States. La last week was Warner Brothers. This week is Universal. Uh, so she is very much of a piece of the 1950s uh, screaming. Yeah, is, is, is this anybody from the movie? I mean, it, no, it's not. It looks no. a little like Melissa's stribling, a, like a tiny bit, but not really. But with, with modern hair. Yeah. And, and a, definitely a modern nightgown, yeah. not the Victorian flouncy number that she's in. Oh, um, do we get the hammer nightgowns in this movie? We get the hammer nightgowns. And they are getting almost to that, that sweet spot. We're not there yet. Yeah. They're still they're breaking new it's, ground. It's fun, though, to see the, the, the hammer, you know, uh, the classic sort of I'll hammer archetypes. It. Yeah, throughout yeah, this movie. To see them coming in a little bit here. Um, but uh, but the, the representation of Dracula, the bats, the castle on this poster is weirdly minimalist and, and just strange. It almost looks like Japanese manga art of yeah, the same period. Yeah. It's very 1950s, 1960s Japanese manga art. Definitely. Um, the, 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 the red pupiled eyes. The This doesn't look like Mr. Lee at all. No, it doesn't. <laughs> but I'll tell you what. If I'm walking around in 58 or whatever... Shit, I want to see this movie. Yep. Uh, Plus, it asks it asks a very important question. Yes, uh, John. What is that question? Who will be his bride tonight? I, I got to find out. You, Tickets this sold. Movie, I got to know. Yeah. This uh, they did get my quarter. They already have my. Maybe it's at this point seventy five cents to see a movie. I don't know. I, I, um, I also yeah. like so they have what is supposed to be a a fang dripping with blood, but it looks more like the fang itself is bleeding. Yeah, or <laughs> it looks a little bit like he has punctured his own lower jaw, and he's like, oh, with uh -oh. His own fang. <laughs> oh and no, 
I'd be like, oh, Jesus. Oh, geez. Oh. I've got to be more yeah. careful with these fangs. Um, so that looks like jam dripping off his face <laughs> and onto the word horror. Yeah. Uh, and the horror Dracula font, that text, that's very, and also the who will be his bride tonight text yeah. font is very boring 50s. The, yep. the 50s really did get really boring yeah. with just like typography. So, but the yeah, thing horror. Be, the thing being pop. promised here is this movie, number one, as we get promised on a lot of these, it's all new. And it is. more importantly, it's in brilliant technicolor. It seems really strange that they would uh, that they had to change the name or felt they had to change the name to Horror of Dracula. And they did that here in the States because they had assumed people would think that it was the Lugosi film on another re-release because they would send it back out to theaters every few years, like at Halloween or something like, oh, here come the Universal Monsters again. But I think no one ever looking at the art on these posters would think this was Lugosi's film. But so I think the horror of Dracula was a necessary. Well, there's, there's no question here that everything about the campaign for this movie, whether it be the fangs or the blood or any of this is like, this ain't your daddy's Dracula. All right. Yeah, this, exactly. We're doing everything they wouldn't do in those yeah. universal movies. This you shit's aren't for real. ready for this. Well, and let's let's then use that to segue to the taglines because that's essentially what these taglines are trying to sell. Mm-hmm. Um, number one, we got the first tagline: "Don't dare see it." Dot dot dot. Alone. I I did stop halfway into that tagline, and that's why I never have seen the film. <laughs> I wish they had not. <laughs> I I, stop, had not... I see a period. Yeah. I don't care how many periods are after it. I stop. That's end of sentence. Uh, okay. They they told me, uh, right. and I don't care. I, you know, I, I was will... going to, but then I see this poster. It says, don't dare see it. So I didn't. <laughs> Might go number twosies if I see it. Um, <laughs> That's for you, fans. <laughs> Scott Hazelwood. That's for you, buddy. Um, uh, I want to save some of these, so I'm going to go on the list here. Oh, we also have... Now she's one of the dead alive brides of Dracula. Yeah, that one's kind of interesting because we're we're being led into the sentence. It's it's ellipses yeah. and so we're we're like what was the first part of it? Yeah. It's like who, I guess who, it would be like, who's she? Be better, What's this? He, that sounds he better bad. In the neck. He bit her in the neck. Now she's one of the dead alive brides of Dracula. I also like the use of the term dead alive and not just cuz of my fandom for that Peter Jackson movie. Yeah, absolutely. That's where he got that from. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow I doubt that, but um, yeah, I but so. I also I bet Jackson is a Hammer horror fan. I would not be surprised. Oh, at he all, has to yeah. be. Oh my god! Um, you you telling me that on breaks during Lord of the Rings, he didn't just sit there with Christopher Lee asking him about you know every little minutia about uh, Rasputin the Mad Monk? You know who's or... really a crazy Hammer horror fan is Tim Burton, of course. It um, totally makes. sense. Yeah, because we'll talk about the presence of Michael Goth in this movie and work he did later on. Um, yeah, it's really sad that he wasn't able to get Cushing, you know. But, yeah, uh, but he got, he got Lee and Goth. Got Goth. Yeah, and he uh, his Sleepy Hollow, he said, was basically his attempt to make a Hammer horror movie. And I think and you can tell successfully. I like that movie. Um, okay. I didn't like the, the the change from the source material. <laughs> oh boy. Well, I I have a feeling we're gonna get used to that statement for the rest of this episode. The rest of your life, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was in knowing you. If but I the... always be the defender of the source material, I yeah. I will wear that. Yeah. What's weird? We'll talk about that. This movie is very off the source material. Oh yeah. And yet, that's not the problem I have with this movie. I mean, okay. and I enjoyed this movie. I did. I love this movie. So I, I, I did, but but I was like, but it wasn't the changes they made to the source material okay. that I had a problem. No, okay. that's what I was, I was like, expecting. That was the conversation I was coming in ready to have because. Lugosi's film the same thing the stage oh, yeah. play changed a bunch of stuff which of course I commented on I'm like yeah that's that's not that person's father this isn't how th- these relationships aren't right and this one's even farther afield oh yeah, yeah. this one's absolutely pretty far off anyway um yeah we talked about Frankenstein spills at Dracula drinks it from the the <laughs> double bill I still can't get over that. um sensational shock and thrill show Sure. And I bet for 58, that was not false advertising. They were probably going, holy shit, did I just see what I thought I just saw? 
Um, the chill of the tomb won't leave your blood for hours after you come face to face with Dracula. Yeah, I'm. These are good. Yeah, these these are these are better than a lot of the Universal stuff. Um, I don't know about this one. The terrifying lover who died yet lived. Yeah. That was yeah, that was lower on the list. I feel like for them, like, they, I guess you notice you notice how often they're referring to lover or brides. Yeah, this this is one of the the sea changes of this character. Is like, dude, we don't have to dance around it anymore. Dracula's thirsty in more than one way, if you know what I mean. Dracula fucks, man. Come on, yeah. that's that's what we're saying here. Dracula fucks. Yeah. <laughs> the, the the one that they were almost going to do, the very next Christopher Lee movie after Satanic Rites, was supposed to be Dracula DTF, <laughs> and it didn't happen. Um, it's a shame. It's him just posting a Craigslist ad. Uh, mm. <laughs> I like those Draculas at a DTF. Yeah. <laughs> Dracula down to four. By the way, what has there ever been a Dracula that wasn't DTF? I mean, Lugosi it didn't, you know, make it clear, Lugosi but it's, it's, as it's, much still, as it's still there. He's still well. DTF, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, here we but have... they're clearly trying to make you, you know, uh, entice you. Like, oh, this is not uh, a staid and courtly no, dude. No, no, no. This is a Dracula who, who's, who's ready for some action. <laughs> Indeed. Um, how about? Oh God, this is an eye roll for me. Christopher Lee's fantastic first ever performance as the Lord of the Undead. That's from a re-release. They would not be touting Christopher Lee right, yet. Right. This is like fantastic. second fantastic. Also, well, I do I, like Lord of the Undead though. Of course, yeah, Lord of the Undead and Lord of the Vamp, King of the Vampires. He has so many of these titles. Um, well, Prince of Darkness, which will be a film title at some point. Yeah, it's the actually the next Lee Dracula movie is called that. Mm-hmm. Um, Brendan, I got another uh, online dating profile tag for you here. Oh, please. What is it? Every night he rises from his coffin bed silently to seek the soft flesh, the warm blood he needs to keep himself alive. It is a good one. I will have to probably for word count for character count. I might have to edit it down a little, but mm-hmm. it's definitely it's in the running, <laughs> and it's very descriptive of the way I live my life <laughs> yeah, or my say, unlife. I read that and I said, "That's Brandon. That's 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 Brandon. That's, that's, that's the Brandon I know." Uh, and then finally, we have one that that very much just puts it on Front Street about what uh, that this is not your daddy's Dracula. Important note: two exclamation points. Don't confuse this picture with the other Dracula movies. This is the newest and best one, and the only one in Technicolor. They, they, they just sound so <laughs> not weirdly defensive. Like, yeah. don't lump us in with that. Other oh, don't bullshit. drag us in with that. No, no, no. We're not doing that shit. No, this is, and it's in color. <laughs> it's the only one in Technicolor. Only one. Only, only one. one. There's only um, one in Technicolor, and it's this one. And, again, they prove it right off the bat. Oh, 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 do they ever. Let's now get into the horror of Dracula. I'm I'm so down for this. I'm down to talk about yeah. the horror of Dracula. I'm DTD down to Dracula. Um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you deserve a swig after that. That that's that's the victory lap right yeah, there. Yeah, they deserve a swig of fruit infused water. Um, <laughs> all right, I'll continue drinking my rain, um, total body fuel. There you go. Got to keep drink. yourself fueled up for this Dracula discussion. Yeah, and then back to the PS5. Anyway, yeah. Uh... <laughs> so we open our the first image we see of this movie is this. Is it an eagle? statue it's a it's a stone eagle carving on yeah. the outside of the castle yeah i don't know what the, the hell this has to do with dracula but they just think it's something dramatic yeah. and it does suggest castle because of the battlements and stuff behind it and they they play the music really like, i do the this movie hits those mu that the music hard man they really are like it's dracula like um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the lyrics did throw me. Yeah. <laughs> it's Dracula, but not that other pussy. This is in Technicolor. 
and he's going to drink blood. This term wasn't around yet, but this was. This is Metal Dracula. Um, <laughs> look at this Dracula. shit right off the bat. So we, 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 we pan over the castle, and we eventually move our way into the, the catacombs Crypt. or whatever. Yeah, the Crypt of Dracula. And there it is, finely labeled, mm-hmm. the Tomb of Dracula. And almost immediately, blood rains upon it and you're like oh I, yeah i i i for i mean because i i have forgotten plenty about this movie um in the years since i've seen it um so as we're zooming in on the coffin i'm like okay all right they just want to state it and since the movie there was called dracula mm-hmm. i bet that that's how they did the actual title was mm-hmm. by zooming in on that um because you know i was like all right I, I forgot about the blood because they just zoom in on the, the coffin with the word Dracula on it. They don't fuck around with the crest. That was Universal's thing. Yeah. It's always about the crest of Dracula. How will everyone anyone recognize this, though? <laughs> this just has his name on it. Yeah. And then very bright blood yeah. just splurts from the top of I, the screen. On the, it looks the fake coffin. as shit. But once again, much like my love of rear projection driving scenes, I love <laughs> this vivid red fake blood of Hammer movies. And again, it is their way of going, this ancient daddy's Dracula. Yeah. Look at that. You didn't see blood no. in those previous and movies. And so you didn't. we're five we're seconds no into this movie and we've got blood. we got blood all over this And look, thing. look, this, this Dracula is so bloody, even his name has blood on it. He is so lackadaisical about his his uh you know his drinking habits yeah. that he'll spill blood even on his own coffin. Like, he doesn't care where it gets. He, That's and his... actually that is a point later in the movie. I'm like going, dude, just clean up a little bit. Never. I mean, come on. If I spill barbecue sauce after eating ribs or something, I wipe it off. No, I he's, wipe it off. He's proud of it, man. He's like, look at this. Look at what I've been this. drinking. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> this movie is so 1958 metal. Yeah, uh, once again, I cannot overstate how much I love this movie. Um, yeah. I really do love this movie. Uh, yeah. So we open on look, getting being somewhat true to the uh, literary source material. We do open on the diary of Jonathan Harker. We do, uh, and he's talking about how he's taken off into where is this? This is one of the things that drove me insane. <laughs> Uh, Transylvania is not mentioned. No. Uh, nor is Romania. No. Nor is London. In other words, this movie never jumps the pond as the classic novel or even the the Lugosi film. Our British Parkers and Homewoods, and they're all seem to be in Germany somewhere <laughs> yeah. because the only towns that are mentioned, and they mentioned them a few times, and I should have written them down. Yeah. But they all like Klauswitz and yeah. I'm like I'm like what? where just, are they they're just down the street from last week's movie with Frankenstein <laughs> exactly and they're just down the street from Castle Dracula like none of these people have traveled far and wide so the idea of the in, encroaching uh, foreign uh, count is not here at all no, everyone they knows chase the him guy. back to his home at the end of this thing they do, but from like maybe five miles away, not yeah. not on a ship and across to Europe and all no. of that. So this is an odd choice. Well, all, it's also I don't know about the Germany thing, but just the idea of keeping everything close is very like money's tight. Um, that, but I mean, they are in England. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know why it's not at least like the English countryside or something that that his castles right. and you know, or, or or you know, you do the thing where you show that that manor, say that's Castle Dracula, and we're in Transylvania. Mm-hmm. Then you cut to another location that you have somewhere in London, and say now we're actually in London. That's just what you do. But yeah, this one just chooses to say no. Nope, no one really traveled for this, and try not to worry about their surnames because we're all somewhere maybe in the Balkans or Germany. And just don't ask. Too this many is the, as as much as we talk about the craftsmanship that goes into this movie. There, this is the hand wavy thing of like, who cares where it takes place? All right, Dracula's got a castle. That is pretty much the point here, and I still think Jimmy Sangster did a fine job yeah. on the script with all of his wacky changes. I have some problems with, but at the same time, I was like, no man, this still moves. This yeah. moves, and I'll take it, it moves. Oh, I mean, I'll say that. 
just with both of these movies we've watched already in season two here with Hammer. Oh, the pacing is such a pleasure after some of those yeah. Universal movies. These yeah. things are booking it story wise. But but here we have um, screens possibly least effective, most boring. Uh, Jonathan Harker's. I will say this guy. Yeah, he's given uh, he's given guy from Thirty One a run for his money in terms of Harker. I like the least. Yeah, he is uh, so ineffectual. Even they they do something in the script where you're supposed to go, oh shit, because Harker traditionally is the innocent coming from England mm -hmm. uh, to be the solicitor for this Transylvanian count who will be moving to England. Here, this guy shows up and, well, the Count has hired me to work in his library. Yeah, he's going to be the Count's librarian. And so that's boring. Uh, and, but at the same time, you're like, and he's so milk toasty. Yeah. But then we get the, you know, we find out later, he's like, um, but I'm really here to destroy him. Yeah. Which is supposed to be like this dun 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 yeah. shit. Unlike the literary Harker. This guy knows what's up before he even gets there. He's Van Helsing's he partner, ostensibly, right? He's I mean, Van Helsing's partner, like his, like his protege or something. So he's a man on the inside. That's a cool twist. Yeah. But this guy is just not... No. Nope. He's just... <laughs> so Harker, anyway. Harker comes in, and I like... He's like, hmm... Is the castle seemed normal enough in the day, except for no birds were singing... Yeah, he shows up in daytime. That that also for me is weird. I'm like, what? Well, all right. Yeah, I mean, he, he just sort of walks up the castle, like, well, no one's here to greet me, and just lets himself in. And he and, lets himself in. He wanders around, and eventually, he does find a note from Dracula. That's like, oh yeah, I won't be out till the evening. Uh, go ahead and eat. I'll see you later. Yeah, and that's kind of from the novel. But he sits down. And he's he's got food, and he's just kicking it. He's yeah. kicking it for a while, and then this lady furtively enters, uh, and she seems familiar to me. Oh yeah, perhaps, well we just saw her. we we, we saw her last saw, week, I believe. We just saw her last week. Yeah, this is uh, Valerie Gaunt again, who played Justine, the maid who was carrying on an affair with Doctor Frankenstein. Justine, uh, the bad, week. bad French accented maid. Thank God uh, she's not here, doing a French accent this time. No, here though she has a brief part. She comes up to him as like, "Oh," and he's like, "Well, hello. How yeah. are you doing?" Uh, by the way, she's she's, like, she's credited as vampire woman. Yeah, she doesn't even get a name, but she basically says, "Oh, you have to help me. He keeps me prisoner here. You can help me escape." And he is so again, when we find out later he knows what's up. Here he's just kind of like, "Well, what's going on? What's he doing? What's happening?" <laughs> <laughs> he he seems like just like oh whereas you would think he'd be like going it's okay i yeah. know about this and i will uh, uh, i'll help you anyway instead he's more like really well tell me more about the fact that he keeps you here you know against your will and, and whatnot it's so terrifying and she hugs him oh hold me and then yeah. she's looking at his neck going oh that sure is a nice neck yeah man. well that that happens in the next scene where she asks him for help oh sorry right 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 because she gets I, interrupted yeah. here by the appearance suddenly of Dracula at the top of the stairs. I do love the way in this movie that Lee just appears in scenes. Yeah. You almost, you you never see him walk in or out of a room, really, except for maybe the end when he's scattering, well, he's, scurrying away, he, you know. Yeah, he, he bolts around quite a bit upstairs and stuff uh, and actually takes him like two or three at a time, which given that guy's frame, you're like, yeah. good Lord, he is I a... I really he, like athletic Dracula. I really That's one of the things I like about lee's performance is he is a very agile fast athletic dracula you know he's very like he moves yeah yeah he, he definitely and 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 again the the height all kind of works to it and the there that's what the director uses a lot is just he's a shadow in human form they'll cut to him and he's just this column of black yeah just standing there he doesn't have the popped cloak collar and actually never does in any of his films no which, but i do like he's got this long cool black cape you know it does flow very nicely and yeah. i know that's a real nerdy thing to say but that's important it's oh, important yeah. in a super oh, I, movie in a dracula movie i was definitely this taking note of how billow. the cape moved yeah out of the billow it yeah. billows nice <laughs> it does yeah especially when he gets some speed on him there that thing uh -huh. is you know 
flapping behind him. It's great. Uh, that's great. Is bat wings. That's the whole point of the cape is to suggest bat wings. So, well, and it's just the, the thing that's cool about Lee as Dracula is he is such a big guy. He is such a powerful man. There is a threatening presence even without knowing he's a vampire. Now, in my memory of knowing, you know, the the Lee films and knowing in advance, it's like such a good actor, and they don't give him a lot to work with. I was very happy in this like initial scene. And I was like, oh, they're not following the novel. They're not. But they they are letting him have a conversation here. Yeah. And at least for a little bit, but shockingly small time because this movie moves, he's at least pretending that things are normal what? and that he's not a vampire. That was also something I liked about this because something I kept bringing up in the 31 movie was the my oft refrain that Dracula in that film has no chill. He's always like, yes, I never drink. <laughs> wine i'm a vampire you know like and i love lugosi's performance in it in that movie the whole idea is that he is supposed to be something alien something other yeah and so whether or not that you know he's a vampire or not you'd think this, this is guy, an odd this person. guy is weird that's why i like lee is just like hello i'm count dracula yeah uh, it's like welcome yeah, look around sure. very nice very nice yeah. can i take well, your bags to your room yeah he's like don't worry i got these yeah because I'm. I have the strength of that's, you know ten minutes. That's my favorite. Uh, is that is that he's he's running a little hotel here. Well, again, this is actually very close to the novel because the whole idea is that Dracula keeps pretending with Harker that there's like staff that the they're, right and and uh, and a little bit in the thirty one film is that there's the he's trying to convince Harker that he's not just the sole inhabitant of this castle. Uh, so he's taking care of everything on the on the uh, in the background. Yeah. So even that little nod, I know it's a Dracula nerd thing of me to sit there going, "Oh, nice," because that tracks with this thing. Yeah. So him going, "No, no, let me show you the room. Mm -hmm. Let me get you a key to the library, and don't worry, I got your luggage." Well, he, got, he, he, go, he goes, "I have some business to attend to, um, so I'll be gone until the next night. Here's the key to the library, and." Uh, do watch after the house as if it's your own. I like. I mean, Dracula's kind of charming. And, Lee's and, playing and him very like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And then he locks him in his room. Yeah. Yeah. Because then, yeah, Harker goes to open the door. He's like, mm, it's locked. Yeah, uh, right here in the first Chris or Lee movie, they're giving him like the scantest, but a little bit of time before everyone in the world knows he's the evil vampire count. So this is one of the few attempts here to let Chris for Lee be charming. And and subtle Dracula, which he almost never is ever. This Dracula right here is good at being a normal guy, really. Oh, he's. That's why I think that that I'm going to enjoy all of these movies. Uh, but I still wish such a good actor uh, as Christopher Lee that they would have given him more shadings to work with, other than just like show up, look at the lady's boobs, and yeah. and uh, open those big red eyes. Look at those boobs. Um. <laughs> Uh, also, I liked in this movie, they did the unibrow mm. uh, makeup wise, which they get rid of later. But yeah. in the novel, I mean, I wish he had the big mustache, but in the novel, yeah, Dracula's got all these telltale signs does from he, folklore. Does he He's rock got, a mustache by the time we get to 72? He never has a mustache, okay. except for in the, in the non hammer uh, Jess Franco movie, that's, Count Dracula. That's the one I'm thinking of. That's the one where he literally tried to do the novel. Yeah. And Chris Lee intrigued. He's like, I would love to actually do the original novel. So Chris Lee has white hair, has the big handlebar mustache. He grows younger over the course of the movie, just yeah. like in the novel. Yeah, I do. I do remember seeing that. No, I, I mean, remember just not liking it. Too. Yeah, that, there's your problem. How about Jack Palance as Dracula? Uh, has a lot of defenders, and there's some good stuff there. That's Dan Curtis production. There's also the Louis Jordan Dracula from around the same period, the 70s. I mean, Louis Jordan as Dracula like just seems like such an obvious choice, right? At that, especially of course. at that time, it's like, well, of course. Well, Jack Palance is similar to a Lon Chaney Jr. performance, is a lot about tortured, because Palance being a fairly ugly man, no offense, <laughs> um, to his family. I'm uh, no, no, what the fuck? gonna drink your blood. So, <laughs> So his thing is very much like, oh, I'm the tortured soul, yeah. Dracula. That's a take. And Louis Jordan's is exactly what you'd expect. He is extremely suave. Yeah. Very continental. Um, he's not tortured in the least. We have talked he's about, very poetic. at some point later in the show, eventually getting to Frank Langella's Dracula. 
Mm -hmm. uh, which is an interesting, an interesting thing. Uh, but anyway, and that would fit because that's a universal one. That too. is, it's yeah. The first time they return to the character since well, you know, the and ones we've been a lot of discussion between us about where this show goes post Hammer, but we're still only on movie two of Hammer. So, uh, back to this: the the thing before he locks Harker in that he does take notice of is the photo Harker has put up of his fiance, and this oh, is yes. definitely the first uh, of uh, Dracula likes the ladies. He's like mm. <laughs> yeah. now. Uh, Who's this? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, reminds me of a guy I used to know who would literally hit on your girlfriend in front of you. Oh, I, I love mean, those guys. Don't you? Those guys are the best. <laughs> he's like, Brendan, you haven't introduced me to your friend. And they'll be like, this is my girlfriend. And then yeah. he would get on her while I'm standing there. And afterwards, my girlfriend actually said, she was like, is he always that pathetic? And obvious, I was like, he is always that pathetic and obvious. But anyway, I call um, it the, the Lando Calrissian move. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's very much Lando, where it's trying to be very smooth. Mm -hmm. uh, but here, Dracula does look at a picture of Lucy, Lucy who is apparently yeah, Harker's I've, fiance. I've, I've seen this movie many times, and I had forgotten that they made this 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 uh, switch choice. Weird choice. Yeah. So Lucy is uh, is and she's Lucy Holmwood, mm -hmm. Arthur Holmwood's sister. And this again, don't make no sense. But anyway, he looks at the picture and he goes, "She's very charming." Yeah, you're a lucky man. Yeah, um, and that's that's great. And again, Chris Lee is great about it. He's like, "Oh, I'm coming off way too strong, so I'm just yeah. gonna go." She seems very charming, and you're yeah. very lucky. And he puts it away. He's like, oh, sure "Don't let on how." Much Want her. I'm sure she's a great conversationalist. Um. Anyway, uh, I did. I she looks like she has a real sensitivity about the arts. Yeah, I. She carries on many fascinating opinions. I have to go. Um, I did. I did hear somebody say, and it stuck with me. It stuck with me every time when people say, "Oh, you're a very lucky man." Is just code for I would totally fuck your wife if yeah. given any ounce of a chance. And that is so a completely uncoded um yeah. just giveaway. Yeah, so you're a very lucky man. In other words, got a raging heart on yeah. your wife. Yeah, sorry, just but gonna it, say it. This is like a I, I have to go. I, Dracula <laughs> needs some alone time. Um, can Dracula I? We'll put that in the bank if you know yeah. what I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, he's very much like no. She will be mine. Oh yes, she will <laughs> be mine. Um, uh, so and it's true. Yeah. Uh, so then Harker finds himself locked, and then he uh, he decides, well, I'm locked in this room. Might as well fill out the diary a little bit more. Which is where we get the big reveal of him going, yeah. well, I've now met the man, and I know more about him, and, uh, well, that makes it easier for what I've come here to do, which is to destroy him. <laughs> well, it's what he says specifically is, I've come here to end Dracula's reign of terror. Which I do yeah. like that, that not, not just that Harker's there to do it, but the... There's an already ongoing reign of terror. This guy's been fucking around for a while, and he's doing shit. You know, I, I like it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that is, for me, like, I'm like, oh, twist. Yeah. I had actually forgotten that about Harger. Once again, I've seen this movie many times, but it's been a while since the last time I saw it. Um, and I was like, oh, shit, that's kind of cool. And I will say, they, as we've said before, just because – Usually, if you've seen a bunch of them when you were a kid, they can blend together yeah. as they are often, you know, in the same time period or close to it. And with a lot of the same actors, clearly with, you know, Peter Cushing as Van Helsing each time. Right. So you're like, uh, is this one the one where blah, blah, blah? You start like going, I can't remember if this is the one where this happened. Well, it's like me going, even, even blumping in Jess Franco, right? And going like, didn't he have a mustache in one of these? Uh, it was yeah. Jess Franco. But it's still Christopher Lee. So I'm sure I, whenever I first saw it, I just assumed it was another Hammer movie. But it was not. No, it was Jess Franco's Dracula. Yeah. Uh, which yeah. I, I think it said on the thing, and I remember like getting that, because I used to, once again, like go to the library and just look up. I would go to the library search system and just type in actors I like. So I'd put in like Christopher Lee and just put a hold on every one of his movies. But I do remember getting the VHS of Jess Franco's Dracula and going, yeah. Who the hell's Jess Franco that is important enough to oh. call it Jess Franco's Dracula? You, know? you young man who eventually <laughs> found out about one of Europe's greatest schlockmeisters. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yes. Who has, who has some critical regard, but only as a cult filmmaker. Um, but, yeah, the, the thing with me, that's the difference, is that that's what you used to do as a kid at the library, yeah. and I would be looking up Dracula. 
Yeah. For me, it was always about the character, and it wasn't about me tracking down actors. I wanted to see every Dracula film or every read every Dracula book. Mm-hmm. Uh, it wasn't about like I didn't have that allegiance to directors and actors. It's like, well, this guy was good. Let's see if this guy is any good. Right, right. It was about following the character. Um, but so, yeah, this is an interesting take on Harker. Um, his his attempts at ending Dracula's reign of terror, I have to say, not very successful. No, he makes a critical mistake later on that we're going to talk about. But I do like, as he's writing this, it just cuts to the shot of Dracula just running into the night. Yeah. Which is great. And But when I say running into the night, I do mean he's spooling up a print of the Jeff Goldblum Michelle Fire movie into the night that he'll be running later <laughs> for movie night. Those outdoor uh, like screen set up. Yeah. And- him and the vampire woman and he's like going this is it's sort of it's an action comedy and yeah. it's i think you'll enjoy it I, uh roll it, it is roll the it. most underrated of john landis's films um i don't know why i'm giving him european accent because he doesn't even attempt one here oh no, he's just um, christopher lee in this thing he's just christopher lee with his great rolling baritone of a voice yeah um yeah i love into the night thanks for that reference i do now too we'll i think again. i actually do think it is john landis's most underrated film Oh, it's great. Uh, and I love the David Bowie cameo. There's oh, lots of great cameos in it because there's tons of director cameos in it. It's really... And it's got a great B.B. King theme song. Mm-hmm. It's a fun right. movie. Tracked it. And I think, I think Shout might have just put out a new it. Blu-ray of it. Um, hope you enjoyed our Into the Night cast. Yeah. I wrote that down in here and I went, oh, Into the Night. Okay, I can make that reference. Uh, <laughs> I don't always plan my references, but sometimes I do. That's great. Um, Good on you. Yeah. So then Harker does get out of this room eventually and he starts sneaking around the castle and he does go into the gigantic library that Dracula has. Um, I do think that the score let us down here because as he's creeping around the castle, literally they were using music that would eventually end up on Scooby Doo. <laughs> it's just sort of like, dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. I think the score is really solid in this movie, but I agree. This is a part where it's like, hmm. <laughs> that's just sneaking around music. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, but yes, he, he finds the big cast of uh, the big library. And this, again, these are nice sets. Yeah. And then once again, uh, the aforementioned vampire woman, or as I was calling her bride, um, uh, mm-hmm. uh, comes up to him and says again, I need your help. He's holding me here against my will. And he's like, well, yeah, but what is he doing? She's like, I can't, I can't tell you that. It's too horrible. It's too horrible what he's doing to even tell you what he's doing. Won't you please just help me? And if you lean in really close, yeah. I will tell you in your ear. Yeah. Um, and again, this is where she's looking longingly at his neck. Yeah. He says, okay, I'll help you. And she's like, great. And then she bites him. She totally bites him yeah. right there. And then it cuts to this awesome shot of Dracula. Hard cut to crazy red eyes, blood all over his mouth and fangs. And he's just like, Argh! Can you imagine that? Again, 1958 audiences. People, um, people right must have now, lost their shit. Yeah, up till now, th- this is like, okay, here's another Dracula film. And, mm-hmm. and he's been Mr. Charming, genteel, handsome dude. <laughs> And then, yes, this shot is a hard cut to, like, going, you were not ready for this. Fanged, bloody mouth, bloody-eyed Dracula yeah. looking insane. Yeah. And this is, again, it's similar to the, the novel and the 31 version of, of, the, uh, of the brides trying to seduce Jonathan Harker and Dracula coming and saying, fuck off, he's mine. Well, uh, and here's the other thing I always love so much about Lee, and obviously it becomes the precedent for so many other vampires, but that Lugosi just couldn't do, as we said, because of his time, is the right. animalistic side of Dracula. Yeah. It is yeah. that I was a gentleman a second ago. Now I'm a blood-covered, bear-fanged like, monster that's going to eat somebody. Yes. And yeah. I love that. Uh, me too. Yeah. Me too. And it's just like, yeah, he's lit- they've literally given Dracula his teeth back. Oh, snap. Mm -hmm. That was really good, John. That one was not planned either. I feel good about that. Uh, Oh, you should. Yeah. Uh, And so he comes in, and he starts throwing this woman around, this vampire woman. He's like, no. No. Without saying it, he's just like, "Uh uh-uh. 
And then I like Harker's like, well, shit, I'm going to fight him now, too. And Dragon's like, oh, I don't think so. And he puts him down yeah. pretty quick. Uh, uh, yeah, again, it is a, a very athletic performance. And power is yeah. one thing I always look for. It's like, is this Dracula powerful? This oh. Dracula is very powerful. Yeah, Christopher Lee Dracula is very powerful. He puts Harker down in the second here. Uh, I do like, and we're not there, of course, but Van Helsing and him like at each other's throats it is just not the kind of confrontation between those two characters that you're used to certainly uh, not from the novel or anything but them just like going at it like i'm gonna get you no i'm gonna get you first i fucking love it man it's actually one of my favorite things about this movie is those two throwing <laughs> down yes, um it is. well because we also have we'll get when we we'll get to cushing a little bit but we also have uh, uh, an unusually fit, lithe, and athletic Van Helsing as well, who's normally sort of an old professor type. Here, he's a man of action. And now called Dr. Van Helsing, not Professor. Right. And at certain points, they call him Dr. Helsing. Yeah. <laughs> well, I like, I like the idea that... Van is his first name. That's what I was going to say. I like that some people assume Van is his first name, and so they... Hi, you know. I'm Van Helsing, it's a pleasure to meet you. Oh, oh yeah, I'm a doctor. Yeah. I, I I never went into academia, so I'm no professor. Doctor no, I'm Van doctor. Helsing. Van Helsing. Van Helsing. Van Helsing. His name being Van Helsing seems like that would have been the uh, David Hasselhoff '80s TV movie of the character, oh, where he's yes. like, "I'm yes. Van Helsing." Oh God, I hope that never happened. To you, you all see any <laughs> vampires tonight? <laughs> Well, let's not forget um, uh, Baywatch Nights. Let's not forget Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. Well, but the spinoff of Baywatch, yeah. Baywatch Nights, did have vampires. He becomes did it a have vampires? I thought it was just like murderers and stuff. No, he becomes a P.I. Yes. It's in the same universe. Which and then insane. because X-Files was so popular, uh, yes, it's murder mysteries, but then there's also supernatural elements. Oh, I, I, I didn't know. I haven't seen enough of so, it to get to that yes. shit. He did, in fact, go up against vampires. Hasselhoff. Right. Now looking Van. for Baywatch Nights streaming somewhere. Um, <laughs> must we see live, Hasselhoff we fight live vampires. Very, we live very full lives, John. We do. As I'm now going, like, I have to watch all of Baywatch Nights. God, if be... you make it through, like, four episodes, <laughs> you've, you've done more than the makers of the film of the... <laughs> Of the show did. There's no way. That oh, they, yeah, they didn't make that. That didn't last very long. Um, no, it did not. Hey, want to see Baywatch with none of the appeals of Baywatch? Um, oh, I think there were still people in skimpy outfits, but just not running on the beach during the day. Yeah, that that there's the problem. Uh, <laughs> it was a very specific fetish for some. Um, what part of nights don't you understand? Yeah. There will be no lifeguards running on the beach. Well, what I like about nights promises it's going to be sexier, right? Like Baywatch yeah. nights, and instead it's Hasselhoff hunting vampires. Um, <laughs> and also, I just remember even just the idea of him as a going from lifeguard to PI never made sense to me. No, but uh, <laughs> but no one cared. No nope. one cared. Nope. Uh, all right, so uh, then uh, Harker awakes on the bed, uh, and he's like, ooh, what's this in my neck? Ooh, a couple of fresh bite marks. Oh, I've been bit. And and this guy, as he does at every turn, is his first response to anything is, better put this in huh. my diary. Yeah, and just kind of a, huh. But he writes in his he diary that he's like, character because he immediately is like, I've been bitten. I'll probably become one of these things. So I hope somebody kills me, uh, yep. you know, and it's just, it, once again, it's just like, yeah, uh, I've given up. Uh, no, he, he, but he is like, <laughs> I am a failure. Uh, <laughs> my entire mission is yeah. a failure, but he, he does say with what strength he has left as himself, he's going to try still try to kill Dracula. Um, yes. and so he goes down to, wherever the 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 crypt of dracula where the the dracula's coffin is he sees dracula sleeping in his coffin he then looks over at another coffin and there's the bride of dracula and his thought is this is the key harker mistake let me take out the bride first why would that you... was exactly the mistake what the fuck was he thinking i don't know the it's bride so is stupid. way less of the threat take get dracula off the board 
I'm yelling at him through the screen watching that scene. I'm like going, dude, Dracula's right over there. The yeah. Lord of the Undead. Yeah. You got him. You got him yeah. if you just do it now. Yeah. Don't take care of her first. Yeah. Because that Though, I did, I did like how, again, they're like going, hey, you remember in 1931 when it was like a silhouette on a wall mm-hmm. of Van Helsing with a big old giant uh, steak and mallet? Well, here, we're just going to show it. Oh, yeah. They, they show it, man. They show it, and and he's like, slamming it down. She screams. Oh. Ah, ah. This is um, horror, man. This is the horror of Dracula. Come on. Absolutely. Dude. And then, you know, at, in her death throes, they uh, very cheesily, she becomes an old woman. Yeah. You got to love that. Uh, I did. And, of course, her screaming. Dra- <laughs> I do like Dracula being startled awake. Like, just the idea of Dracula being like, <laughs> what? What? <laughs> uh, no, I'm up. I'm up. I'm up. I'm up. Yeah, what is and he it? Wipes, he wipes some of the bloody drool yeah, off what, his mouth. What is this? What? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Bring <laughs> me up to speed. <laughs> was that the car alarm? Was that? What's going on? <laughs> the car alarm. <laughs> well, ever since ADT installed that alarm system, I feel I sleep much better at night. This car is protected by Cobra. Step away. <laughs> Step away. <laughs> Cobra's got my back. Um, <laughs> Cobra's got my back. Um, so yes, uh, Harker is not only sort of uh, wussified and unimpressive hero here. He's also a very stupid well, hero. I also like. I love. And kind of deserves what happens to him. I love that Dracula loves an entrance this much, though. That Harker looks over and the coffin's empty, and he's like, "What? Oh no!" And then he looks up, and the door to the room is open. And Dracula comes in through the door again. And I like that Dracula's like, I'm going to sneak out of my coffin, go outside, just so I can come back in and be like, it's Dracula. <laughs> he's a theatrical he just, man. He's a theatrical man. And I, I thought it was great that he even had his own intro music. That is, <laughs> it becomes like the WWE <laughs> or something. He's got his own. Oh, Dracula's getting ready for this fight. <laughs> Are you ready for this? <laughs> Harker doesn't stand a chance. Look at the way he's whipping up the crowd. <laughs> Swing of that cape around. It's Dracula. It's personal. <laughs> it's totally personal between these two. <laughs> it's going to end in blood. It's the fight you've been waiting for. Dracula versus Jonathan Harker. And actually, I was waiting for it, but this Harker was so unimpressive that I'm like, well, I guess fuck him. And this movie gives us, I mean, uh, I mean another not, we twist don't... on it is not only does Harker not survive, yeah, he does become one of them. Yeah, I suppose. Well, we, I mean, we, he does. We, yeah, we don't really but, get to see him running around as a vampire, though. No, well, we see him in the coffin we as do. a vampire. Yeah. And and Van Helsing has to take him out. Yeah. Um oh, and, and he does oh, Van great. Helsing's staking everybody in this movie and it rules. Um, yeah, it does. I yeah. want more Van Helsing staking people in my life. I mean, I, I yeah. I, that's I mean, okay, so we we'll we'll get to it here because the next John, scene, you need to calm down. You well, need I know, to calm down. Because I can't I I, once again, I, I I love Cushing as Dr. Frankenstein, but Cushing as Van Helsing it this is cinema's best Van Helsing, man. This Van Helsing, oh, I love him so much. Van Helsing is a man of action, yeah. And I do like this. I like this character obviously more than I do Doctor Frankenstein because here he is our hero. Oh, and, and uh, unabashedly a hero, this Van Helsing. But also similar to other screen Van Helsings, um, I like the fact that he is the good guy. But also he's like, do what I fucking tell you, yeah. and maybe survive like he's he's this sort of he's not cuddly no there is there's the scene with him and the little girl which is actually kind of sweet uh, i'm like yeah. wow okay they're humanizing there's your bit. save the cat moment there's your save the cat moment exactly and of course the audience is going to be totally on his side yeah. look how awesome he is with children it's the only time but, he's uh, ever gentle in this movie yeah um and also i thought even though it is a good scene i kept thinking like you're gonna let Arthur, go back in the crypt without you being there. You Same with spend Alfred, all this time yeah. the girl, and like <laughs> maybe you should let the little girl just sit there. She's safe. Well, and go take care of when you need to take well, care. Because I just actually similar to what he does as Frankenstein, except Frankenstein is a more 
you know, nefarious character, he is just laser focused. He's like, my mission is to take these things out. All right. Yeah. And I know what I'm doing. I'm the only person here who knows how to kill these things and they've got to go. They've just got to go, man. In the book, Van Helsing is is the know-it-all. Obviously, he yeah. knows all this stuff, and he's got iron will and determination. But he is also extremely solicitous. It's part of his charm is that he flatters constantly. Like you know, it's like Jonathan Harker, you are so strong, and you 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 are going to protect your wife and Miss Mina. Everyone who meets you loves you. We will all protect you with our lives. It's very like he's that kind of guy. Yeah. Uh, and I love that Van Helsing because, again, that's classic Van Helsing. But Peter Cushing's guy who was like, this is my task. This yeah. is my job. And I got no time for niceties or, uh, you know, worrying about the feelings of this maid who totally fucks up. I'm here to get things taken care of. Yeah. And I, I do like that. Yeah, I, I do, too. I love it. And it's Peter Cushing. And Cushing, yeah, it just... Once again, MVP. Well, because if you talk about, you know, the scripts letting Lee down in Frankenstein and in the right. Dracula movies, they never let Cushing down. Like, this they is don't. just... Cushing gets all the best stuff. It took a while for Christopher Lee's star to rise. Like, I mean, uh, as you could see from the last film... He was the guy that it was between him and another tall guy to be the creature of Frankenstein. And it's, it's the they, time when him being tall worked for him, right? Because they're like, ooh. Yeah, exactly. Well, the other guy was extremely tall as well. Yeah. And uh, Cushing, who had worked with him on some other thing, was like, take Chris. I like yeah. him. But really, Chris really didn't get to that point. No one was deferring to him at this point right. yet. Well, even, even uh, you look at the credits of this thing, it's Peter Cushing in Horror of Dracula. These people, these people, these people with Christopher Lee as Dracula. Cushing was a huge TV star and yeah. had already made some films. Was he? He wasn't Doctor Who yet. He will no. be Doctor Who for a couple of movies, which is um, which uh, is is a weird entry into the Doctor Who canon. But they're not canon. Yeah, they're not. Included. They're not. But it's just a weird thing that those exist. But you think about it, and watching this again, I am thinking like, fuck, Cushing's such a good choice for Doctor Who. Yes. Oh, I wish that had been a more legitimate, real thing. I okay. wish those movies had. I mean, they're not great movies. I watched them just out of curiosity. Yeah, and because it's Cushing, great. it's Cushing, yeah, and I'm, he's great. And Cushing was never bad in anything. He was God always. Damn. That's the thing about him. We've talked about it last week, but it's true. It didn't Rick matter McCain. how shitty the thing was or how schlocky it was. He was in a hundred percent. Dude, right after, uh, and I'm gonna call you dude now because we're, <laughs> we're we're bros. Yeah. Uh, Thanks, bro. Right after. <laughs> Right after, you know, uh, Curse of Frankenstein, he did the Abominable Snowman oh, for oh, Hammer. Oh, oh that's that a picture. Is, is awful. Oh, it's God. Just awful. It's so bad. It's really boring. And it's yeah. boring. Yeah. And it there, sounds there cool. Are, Hammer is Abominable Snowman. Stage. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's you know, a sound stage and oh, bright. Yeah. It's not convincing at all. But, I mean, he's great. Yep. <laughs> it's great. It's like you're, like, bored. You're bored. Then he's saying something. You're like, what's that now? Yeah, and then bored again. You know, and I so, find this to be the case with a lot of these classically trained British actors. It just seems like they're so well trained that they can't be bad. They just can't. pretty. Much, they just pretty much. It's so yeah. They just even know. if they know they are so far above the material. Yeah, they don't act like they are so far they above can't the material. Not do the job. Anthony Hopkins still crushes in Transformers Five. You know, and you're like, what is he doing here? Why is he here? But he was on screen, and you're like, fuck, oh, yeah, he's talking about those Autobots. I'm going to take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> but still, he's like, when the Autobots come, they will be, you know, and you're just like, shit, man, I'm buying it. <laughs> I love that, man. But then again, it is true. These great British actors, um, they earn every penny they make, and generally speaking, they can class up the schlockiest piece of shit. Yep. And they often do john carradine could not do that <laughs> on the american side god bless oh, him but if you watch vampire hookers uh from like 1970 whatever it you're like oh get him another bottle and send him away these vampires uh, are hooking <laughs> well he's their pimp yeah. he, he's the make, the make, make me more money bitch uh <laughs> that's really good <laughs> Wow, obviously you have seen it. I have. I've studied it intensely. My entire Carradine impression really is only based on his performance in Vampire Hookers. Uh, uh, 
was it was your college thesis, right? You wrote it, about it the was vampire. yeah. It was a very detailed uh, analysis of that film uh, and specifically <laughs> Carradine's performance as said vampire mm-hmm. pimp. Um, oh man, uh, the uh, cold day in hell before we get to vampire hookers on this show, but I can't say yeah, it's impossible. Uh, That'll be in my retirement years. Yeah, after I retired from my job at subway vampire uh, hookers yes i remember the picture um all right so uh so we get to the introduction of van helsing here and he comes into this tavern i love the way that everybody just stops and it is like why oh look it's the star it, of the movie it's also the classic uh oh there's an outsider in our midst and we yeah. are a small community so we must look at him we are we are highly suspect of him. Yeah, he's got a nice coat. By the way, I think my new fashion icon is Peter Cushing as Van Helsing in this movie because I love every outfit he wears in this film. I I, I kind of said that about the last time too. I mean, he's he's not he, he's not your movie star handsome, no. but the man cuts a figure. Yeah. To where you know whether he's in Edwardian gear like he was last time, or in this one where he's in Victorian gear, yeah. And then cut to you know the Death Star, and he's filling out the goddamn Imperial uniform. That guy just an eagle, like yeah. this, this. Just it's like, damn, I wish I looked like that. Yeah, because part of any clothes on him makes that look awesome. And I agree. Yeah, he looks awesome in this. Yeah. I'd wear the little, I'd wear the overcoat. Yeah, and the cool. I love, I love when he's just wearing a scarf draped over himself later with like a vest and you're like god yeah. damn this guy is cool god damn. and we are the thing- just, yeah we this is our big uh i think this is peter crushing is gonna be yeah the new i mean podcast. i knew this was coming because i already you know i've we are very much in love oh, with peter cushing, cushing man he was yep. just yeah he the was, best he really was he really was i love him as sherlock holmes um yep. just oh god he he was a perfect choice for sherlock holmes um he was actually dead on yeah uh um, lee, lee is also a good sherlock holmes i like the lee sherlock holmes yeah uh yeah, I, I, yeah. I i did like those private life of sherlock holmes when he did that mm-hmm. that's quite good. yeah yeah good stuff uh so he comes in and he's and he and uh he goes uh he walks in uh and he enters and he, he says i'm looking for my friend jonathan harker and this bar owner instantly is just like i uh, yeah, never heard of him nope yeah. don't know him don't know him and van helsing's just like well that's odd because he definitely sent me a letter from this address so what's weird about this is i mean this is such a trope that you almost just you just accept all of this mm-hmm. but then you got to think why are these people protecting the count who probably has been feeding off their their local yeah local for, for decades why would they be like oh we've got to protect the counts yeah i just like the idea that these people are just like just as long as we don't acknowledge it it's not really there yeah but luckily there's one very rebellious barmaid oh uh, you're talking about inga yeah she has a soft spot for poor boring jonathan harker yeah and that's uh that's barbara archer as inga yeah um leave it to hammer for it to be a hot blonde that is the one who uh you know is like <laughs> yeah. oh i know him uh um, yeah she, she comes over to van helsing when he sits down after after the the bar keeps like going never heard of him and are you going to get something or not that kind of thing he sits down and she comes over with this little plate with a, a napkin on top of something she goes actually i do remember the gentleman he came by here and he was uh and he mentioned you, mm-hmm. and he mm-hmm. had this thing that he wanted to make sure that you got. He's the only person who's ever been to nice to me in this bar. <laughs> yes, and and I was supposed to burn it, but I didn't. I couldn't bring myself to do it. So here you go. So she slides it to him, and it is the ever-present journal yeah. of Jonathan Harker. So uh, yeah, Inga, Inga kind of saving the day there. I do like when the owner later also comes with Ben Helsing and says, Yeah, we prefer people not to interfere in our town's business. Our vampires are our vampires, all right? <laughs> yeah, our apex predators that feed on our children are our apex predators that feed on our children. That is this town's problem, pal. Uh, I had four brothers and six sisters. Had. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and that's the way we like it. 
Uh, That's where I could be picked off by an undead creature. <laughs> Who are you to tell us our ways are strange? <laughs> I just, I do love the way that how just instantly furious this bar owner is so antagonistic towards Van Helsing for just being like stop poking around our creepy castles. Uh, <laughs> uh, so so uh, Van Helsing uh, goes to the castle. He goes to Castle Dracula, and at the exact moment he arrives, this stagecoach comes screaming out of the castle with a coffin dragging it. behind it. Yeah, uh, not dragging behind well, it. Well, no, it's, 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 in, it's in a carriage behind yeah, it, it or whatever. It's it, in like a glass, that, so you can see it. Well, like a funeral cortege. Yeah. Like, it, like one of those uh, things. So it's in the glass. Yeah. You know, and that's handy. So that way Van Helsing would know what was in it. Van Helsing, instead of and it Van Helsing just kind of gives a hmm to that. Yeah, he just kind of goes, huh. All right. I do like the fact that Dracula's coffin in this movie is just a, it's like a daring white. Yeah. He's like going, oh no no no! I know what you were expecting. Yeah. Instead, look out my look at my sweet pent out white coffin. Once again, he's so theatrical. He's like, I wanted to shine. Yep. I want people to be in awe of my coffin. Um, <laughs> what do you have in a white? Uh, and they. Oh yeah. Uh, and so then Van Helsing starts poking around this castle, and uh, let's see. He's uh, he's searching. He's calling out for Harker in the castle. He fi- he finally gets down to the crypt where he finds the yeah shriveled old corpse of the bride, and then yep. yeah finds Harker, and he's like oh no not Harker, I'd love yeah. that boring man. Um, he was so bland. <laughs> I'm going to send him to the most bland of afterlife. Yeah, and so he pulls out. I do love his staking kit that he has in this movie, the way he rolls it out and he's got the little mallet and the multiple stakes. And he's just like, look brother, you know, I'm sending you to a better place. And he pound, right. pounds him. This, actually, he doesn't, where... we don't see him pound. This one, we don't see him pound. No, we don't. Actually. He just kind of looks and he's it. like, Oh, they do a nice to. little fade. Yeah. I will bring up this story. I hope it's not something I've brought up before on this podcast. <laughs> it may have been, but did I tell you about my career as a vampire hunter? I don't believe you've mentioned your career as a vampire hunter. How has when it not I was, come up? I can't believe it. When I was in third grade, at this point, I was already deep into my fascination with Dracula. Yeah. Um, I got in trouble at school because I had brought in a, a little briefcase, which I guess was one of my dad's cast-offs, uh, that I had created a vampire hunting kit. Uh, I had sharpened tomato steaks. Um, I had a mallet. I had a crucifix. Uh, I didn't have any holy water. We were not Catholic. Um, it wasn't very Methodist to have holy water. But um, I had a mirror for detecting them. Um, and this is third grade. So uh, maybe, I don't know what, six, seven? Yeah. Uh, and yeah. I had with a mimeograph machine, which you are too young to know what that is, but that's pre-Xerox machine. That is pre-copier. Um, it was, they were basically this thing that had inked rolls and you could mass produce stuff and it was always purple ink and it stunk. I've seen it in movies. (laughs) Okay. All right. Yes. Um, I had made a business card, uh, multiple sheets of it that I had handwritten and it said, Brendan D Jones, vampire hunter. Oh, that's uh, awesome. And had my phone number on it. And I handed the card out to people at school to let them know if you, I know you think it's funny, but if you think you've met a vampire, let me know and I will kill them. And at recess, I was showing people how you take out a vampire. I love this story. Not on a person, not on, a person on the dirt. Yeah. But I was like, you have to get there during daylight hours when they're powerless. And I'm hammering the stake into the ground. And that's when the teachers figured out what I had in the briefcase that I was walking around with. And that's when I was taken to the principal. And that's when my parents were called. So, what uh, was your parents' reaction to this? You know, I actually don't remember, <laughs> and I can only assume that they they were all they were high school teachers, so they were like at the school two schools over essentially. Um, they were like, "We're sorry about this." I think they just shook their heads and said, "You can't take that to school anymore." Yeah, I mean, because they but they, they, they knew they who their me. kid was, <laughs> right? I mean. <laughs> Yes, but I don't think they told me that I had to give up my business of yeah. killing vampires. Just, 
Exactly. In your off just hours. Off, in your off hours. Don't take that to school. That's a side gig. <laughs> so that, again, any time in a movie, and you, you triggered that by mentioning that, and I always think about it, when Van Helsing or whoever rolls out the vampire hunting kit, mm-hmm. I am back in third grade, <laughs> still waiting, by the way, for a phone call. I have not gotten my first client. Yeah, but I am always ready. We'll put to it. We'll put it out now. Yeah, if any if any of our listeners have vampire troubles, you'll take care of it. I will take care of it. Brendan D. Jones, uh, vampire, vampire hunter. hunter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. There's my story. We can move along. Um, so then we transition to Van Helsing shows up at the Homewood House. Yeah, and we get the introduction of one of my favorite Hammer players, Michael Goth. The great Michael Goff. I love him. Um, here's what I... He's a different kind of performer. That They're all great. Mm-hmm. But he's different than Cushing. Mm-hmm. Cushing is deadly serious. Yeah. You know, occasionally with a glint of, like, maybe some humor. But he's he is laser-focused, like you said. Right. Goff is a very theatrical guy. Oh, yes. Always has. So I love all the way he swings in this movie as far as, like, sometimes it's... Well, I'm angry at you, and how dare you? I'm I'm being self righteous, and then like, oh, oh, but my wife, like he he's very theatrical. Yes, he just yes. goes to something big. he continues even in the Batman <laughs> movies with this. Yeah. yeah, I just at the end of Batman Returns, I was thinking, Merry Christmas, Master Bruce. Yes, you know, absolutely. It's just always and, this and like, I I do love him as well, and he brightens the screen. Uh, so I was very happy to see. I think he might be my favorite cinematic Alfred. Well, you don't have too many to choose from. That's true. Really. Um, yeah, no, he's he's absolutely great. Yeah. I mean, he is the I mean, most. He's he's pretty on point with comic book Alfred. And he's, I mean, I do like the whole idea behind like a Jeremy Irons where they're like, you know what? We need to make this guy more a little younger and more physically capable because he's the guy who had had, you know, special forces training. And, right. You know, well, I feel everything. like there's like, been a trajectory of that, right. From goth to Kane to irons. Every yes. time he gets a little bit more badass. And by the way, I don't mean to leave Kane out of the conversation. Yeah. He's great, but great. he's always just, he's just Michael Kane. Michael Kane. So yeah, that's Alfred. <laughs> Batman. Yeah, yo, a... yo parents, yo, yeah. Yep. I oh, can't the, do it. The one, the one I always do from it is, uh, uh, you still haven't given up on me. And he goes, never, never. Yeah, yeah, Love yeah. It. He, he is, he is an Alfred that I in my life would like to have. Oh, whether I absolutely, whether I, whether I became Batman or not. Yeah, that's the kind of Alfred where I would feel like you are my father. Yeah. You are my servant father. You're the best ever. Absolutely. Yeah. That I think that is a key difference there. Goth feels like he was your grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> yes yes um he's very uh, old but, and frail and he's great uh, he's we, still great, still great. yeah and goth and, is great here because well because van helsing has come and and, and they, they kind of come in mid-conversation in the scene and they're like so i i don't understand you're telling us jonathan is dead but you won't tell us how or where or like you just and he's yeah, like van Hel- yeah very it. like yeah sorry he is dead i can't tell you how he died you wouldn't believe me anyway and um, uh, well because i do like that van helsing's like look i'm totally you know lasered in on my mission but i know it's crazy if i tell people he was turned into a vampire i know that's gonna sound nuts so (laughs) all right so for the five people who give a shit here's the differences uh, arthur homewood played by michael Michael goff in the book yes homewood is the one who marries lucy he's one of her suitors and he's the one that she chooses yes here in this movie lucy is his sister correct so Lucy Holmwood is Jonathan Harker's fiance right. in this movie. Right. So right off the bat, I'm feeling weird that the betrothed couple are now siblings in this movie. And in this movie, Mina is the wife of Arthur Holmwood. Yeah. And it, again, makes me go, ah, blah, blah. but since we've killed off Jonathan Harker in this movie, that wouldn't work anyway. It's like Mina and, and Jonathan Harker were never a thing here. It was here. It's, it's Arthur being concerned about, Mina becoming one of the undead right, um, right. and not Harker. So again, I, I roll with it. It's like, the, it's like a CW show. Well, CW superhero show where they just took the names and were like, eh, it doesn't matter what, what, 
relationships or even power sets in the superhero world these had. We're just going to use the names and some nerd's going to go, uh, uh, but, 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 and that's me. I'm the nerd here going, Arthur Holmwood is married to Mina. Mm -hmm. Lucy's sister. What world am I in? This is crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. And then I kick shit over in my apartment, which doesn't help. No, it does not. Believe it or but, not. No, but it, I'm on for this ride because yeah. Cushing's walking here. Goff yeah. is working. And uh, we have, this is Stribling. Yes. As, uh, as Mina. Yes, Melissa worried Stribling about her, as Mina Homewood. Worried about her sister-in-law, Lucy, uh, played by, you have it in front of you? Uh, I do. It is Carol Marsh. And I think both women are very good. I think yeah. especially especially once the whole like we're being turned thing mm -hmm. where they lean into the sort of I I am I'm being fed upon, but it's also working for me in ways I never thought before. This movie's one of the first that introduces that idea of like, holy hell, this is a sexual release and I am in mm -hmm. to being turned into vampire lady that's kind of hot to be a vampire um so. uh, it looks like stribling is primarily a tv actress from the look of things uh yeah none of the women that we've seen uh well we've watched two hammer movies we, have, but we haven't seen any of the hammer female regulars yet right exactly they they are established actresses that they got cheap yeah uh and they're actually quite good but yeah. most of them ended up going right back to either other studios or doing tv yeah well, both, and both of these women have no other hammer credits right it's not like uh it's not like an ingrid pitt no or someone like that well because when know. we get to ingrid pitt we'll never lose ingrid pitt pretty much <laughs> I, I love ingrid pitt i do too but it's just like once we they lock in this repertory company after a few movies and that's what we get pretty much for the rest of the films indeed okay anyway so yes uh so yeah arthur is just like i find this whole thing incredibly suspicious and van helsing's like should we tell mina about john i mean well, uh, should we tell lucy lucy, uh, lucy about john like she can't handle that yeah he is ill uh she's not gonna be able to take that news yeah so then they go and visit poor lucy yeah she's sick in bed and she's like, oh, Jonathan will be coming home any day. And Arthur's just like, yes, yes, <laughs> yes, any day now. Any day now. You just rest up, you. And Mina's like, well, shouldn't we tell her that? And Arthur's like, it'll kill her. It will kill her. Look at her already. Jesus. Um, <laughs> and they, uh, we do get a brief. There's two brief appearances by a Dr. Seward, who yes. in this movie is a family physician, not a psychiatrist. He's also just sort of a real tut 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 kind of old doctor. He's a real tut 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 guy who really just comes in to say the wrong things yeah. and give the wrong recommendations. Like, <laughs> oh, she just needs a little rest and you should take her out into the sunshine for yeah. a couple hours a day. And he just has a lot of, I don't understand everything I'm doing should have cured her. And blah, 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 blah. And Van Helsing, I love the fact that Van Helsing looks at this guy with such contempt of yeah. like, you fucking hack you don't know what the hell you're talking about clearly you get never, out clearly you never studied vampires in medical school um yeah. <laughs> it's my sole course of study and so man that helped me. expert when mina and arthur leave lucy immediately is like oh good they're gone and runs over and opens the window and sort of splays herself out on the bed and we clearly see the two puncture marks on her neck we don't see dracula like, show up but it's implied when, but she's like going thank god they're gone where's my boyfriend yeah i do yeah i mean look at this dracula basically is somebody's boyfriend sneaking up the trellis after parents go to sleep that's he his move the, he is the horny teenager <laughs> yeah. he's like, oh, uh, what time do they go to sleep? Yeah. time they go to sleep oh yeah okay <laughs> do, they, do they sleep really heavy cool yeah. man i'm gonna bring up some wine coolers and we'll party <laughs> some wine coolers ladies and gentlemen yeah yeah uh dracula uh he got a good deal on bartles and james down at the uh <laughs> i'm glad you got that reference because i wasn't sure if that was the thing that even even yeah, you know it survived traveled. it survived into the 90s uh, i think isn't it a joke somewhere in super bad maybe they mentioned bartles and james i think there is something about that now and now i feel like the wine coolers have segued into the white claw hard seltzers and now the like that, young that woman thing 
you know, college well, drink? That, it, was, it was Mike's Hard Lemonade. Oh, God, They're yeah. Really soft liquors that, that become the joke where it's like, yeah, if you're not really a drinker, you'll mention this stuff and, and they'll go, uh-huh. And, and, and Zima's. Yeah. Zima's before and, that. And to be fair, like, the few times I do drink, that is the shit I drink because I don't like the, uh, the more the hard lemonade kind of stuff like that or the wine coolers. That. Not the, not I, the Z, I've never had a Zima in my life. Uh, for our listeners, I am, I am a, a teetotaler, but if I've ever been around ciders, because I don't like the taste of yeah, a lot of alcohol. Yeah, ciders also are my thing too. Yeah. Like that, that you know, hard lemonade and cider is like, oh, there's a fruit flavor to that that doesn't yeah. make this taste like paint thinner. So yeah, I'm uh, also the guy who will order the fanciest, most like uh, uh, feminine cocktail at a bar too. Um, I still, I, it's the it's the kids in the hall skit about the uh, girl drink drunk is one mm-hmm. of my favorite things ever, where he becomes a raging alcoholic, but it has to be in these <laughs> brilliantly colored huge glasses with with umbrellas and yeah. slices of pineapple in it it's hilarious that's that's and swirly straws if God, i'm dude. if i'm at a bar that's what i i will order it's something that has a whipped cream flavored vodka in it you know because <laughs> <laughs> i don't All like right. i don't like the booze uh you know amen brother yeah. i'm right there with you uh, nerd, don't get uh, blasted there you go yeah and i have the one and i sip it all night and never get drunk uh that's the other there thing. you go yeah there you go um so yeah. Uh, meanwhile, we cut to Van Helsing listening to himself on a record and going through Harker's diary, just just reminding himself how to kill vampires. Yeah, it's a weird way to get exposition across, but it does. That's an echo of the novel, and it's like okay, because uh, Doctor Seward recorded his journal on wax cylinders, mm-hmm. which that was the thing is that weirdly Stoker was being like Michael Crichton of his time, going. Guys, in my novel, I'm talking about blood transfusions and recorded wax cylinders. I am ahead of the game. I'm talking about the latest tech. So here's a nice (laughs) little callback. You have Van Helsing using wax cylinders. They even make a point of having this guy come in going, (laughs) I just heard you talking to yourself. He goes, well, I suppose I was. This butler character. There's a couple of comedic relief side characters that I don't Uh, love in this movie. No be talking about one yeah we're not to him yet no we, i know um, i know which one you're talking about uh so because yeah this this butler or whatever comes in and van helsing's like oh good can you mail this letter and he's like certainly sir uh, i am a little concerned i heard you talking to someone and van helsing goes yes i was talking to myself and this guy just <laughs> gives a like what uh, of, yeah he's and crazy. then crazy and he sees the uh, the uh, wax cylinder uh, thing uh, and uh, freaks out and says it's a tool of the devil and burns it. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was a weird choice. Where he goes, unclean, unclean, yeah, yeah. and burns. Yeah. And then Van Helsing has to kill this guy. It's really weird. <laughs> How'd you get a little man in it? A talking man. <laughs> no, he just has to slap the hysteria out of him as we see him do later to a woman, which I love. Oh. Love Van Helsing just smacking the hysteria right out of a woman. Um, It really really does. And so then he goes back over and he's like, oh, wait, a couple more things about killing vampires. And he starts recording some more. And yeah, it's all just standard rules about garlic and crosses. And it's just giving you, like every vampire movie does, these are the rules we're following. Because there are so many rules about vampires throughout the culture. One thing I did appreciate about this movie is that he and Goff, once Arthur believes him, and he's like talking to him about, it's like well from what i understand from the folklore it's like aren't you know how does he show up it's like isn't aren't they supposed to be able to turn into bats and and various things and i do like the fact that van helsing goes i i've heard that i don't think that's the case yeah and then later on they never definitively it's like how did he get in that room and he he goes maybe he can turn into something and and van helsing literally goes yeah i guess maybe i i do like the fact that van helsing is finally admitting like I don't know everything, and I have a feeling this is Hammer's way of going, look, we can't afford good bat transformation effects or mist. They will do that later in some of the later movies, but here he's like going, um, I don't know. I don't think they can. We know how he gets into the house. Though. We as the audience know how he gets into the house. Oh, yeah, yeah, later. Because, because of yeah, the, the his coffin's down in the cellar. That's actually the big turning point. Yeah. But they do at least have Van Helsing go, yeah. you know what? I'm open to the concept of it, but I don't think that is yeah. how it I've works. seen no evidence of that. That's what people it's one of those things like, that's what people say. 
I would love to know how many vampires pre Dracula that Van Helsing has put down in this mm, world. I am on. Look, I'm available to write the Van Helsing prequel. Everybody. Yeah. Uh, could you make him have a big, broad, uh, brimmed uh, pilgrim hat? It goes without saying. Make- steam powered crossbow with holy water in Goes it without saying hey all that stuff is cool on paper that movie just doesn't work <laughs> uh i kind of agree with you there's stuff that i like in that movie for sure yeah i mean but if it, it tallied up with van helsing that we know but it really fit but it just as a movie it doesn't quite no it doesn't no I was disappointed. I remember being very excited I about was, it. I was excited for it, and I had the, uh, I think Taco <laughs> Taco Bell oh, yeah. had uh, had various little like posters and and little figures and stuff, and I yeah. was like, oh yeah, I got Dracula, I got the Wolfman, now I need Frankenstein's monster. Yeah. Uh, and then I actually saw the movie. He's like, well, does anyone want this stuff? <laughs> yeah, and right in the trash this goes. Um, so Anywho. I also uh, he, the thing he's recording is he says the only thing that we know for sure is that wherever he is, he must be destroyed. Cut to Dracula coming into Lucy's room, and the Hell yeah. like music, and you're like, oh, yeah, I was literally sitting here going, oh yeah, here we go. That's the thing is it it I mean. I don't. This movie isn't moving like a freight train, but the pacing is so much superior. No, I bet listeners are going, "What the hell are they talking about?" This thing is. But I will say, some of these editing choices are great and very modern. Uh, Very modern, and it is very knowing cuts like that to where they're like going, "You weren't ready." Yeah. And I'm throwing this in your face, and you, and it's like a a smash cut. Smash cuts like this. That's not the 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 style of the. So I loved those choices where it is something like that. I tell you one thing, he's got to be destroyed. Boom, he's right there. Yeah. It's like, yeah. And so then man. he's approaching Lucy. And yeah, we're getting sexy. Lucy's once again splayed on the bed. And he's oh, yeah. he comes in and he's like, oh, yeah. Going to have oh, a little snack. There's kissing. Yeah. Which is, I mean, not, not a lot. But he does like, it's not, he doesn't go straight for the throat. Uh-huh. It's a really, really nice choice of he, yeah. he kind of caresses like the yeah. eyes the forehead he's yeah. working his way down and i'm like he's Dude. nuzzling her neck before he's biting it yeah and then he bites it. and then you do see that it became a trope later on but you do see that look of like ow oh yeah, yeah. so you, you see that transformation of like i like being drained <laughs> so just, that's, a, that's a new one i just want to i just want to see one of these movies where jackie is like hey they like it man <laughs> I don't see one of these movies where it's the opposite, where they go, ow, when they get bit, and they're like, ow, ow, no, ow, all the way through, like, ow, You know what, this, this sounded, ow, this sounded ow, cool ow. for like a second, but no, I don't I'm like getting, this. I'm getting really faint. I, yeah. How? With the hurting. Yeah. That's, where's the sexy part? Because no this good. is just, I'm being bled out, and that's not fun. Yeah. Um, and everything's getting fuzzy, and I'm... <laughs> So then it cuts to it does cut to old Doctor Seward coming out and he's like I don't understand I she has a anemia and I've done all the treatments and she should be better but she's worse somehow anyway I have no answers goodbye. What's hilarious is that Van Helsing hadn't even factored in like he he knew Mina was ill didn't have any idea it's when Seward says uh, it could be anemia and they do show Van Helsing like his face goes oh shit. And then he virtually runs into that bedroom to like <laughs> look actually, for bite marks. Actually, Seward just clears out of there. It's Mina who goes to Van Helsing and tells him about the anemia. This Seward is good for nothing oh, in this movie. Right. Seward's yeah. just like, I don't. Is good anyway, for- no further information. Bye. Yeah. Mm. By the way, are you are you sure you get you're taking her out for some sunshine and yeah. fresh air? Every- Leave those windows open too. Leave them open. I got, and I got nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I got nothing. Yeah, but that's right. We've and, done uh, as much as medical science can. And I keep screwing up Mina and Lucy because in yeah. my head, that's... No, it, it is tough. Mina then so, goes to Van Helsing and says, hey, Lucy's really ill and, like, you're a doctor. Uh, and says, uh, yeah, she's uh, very pale and anemic. And he's like, anemic? I must see her at once. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, he, comes, he comes running in here. And you know why? Because he knows what's up. Yeah, John. The, he knows what's the up. The one thing that is true across this whole movie is Van Helsing knows what's up. Absolutely. 
the case. And um, so he comes in and uh, and he's like, "Hello, Lucy. I'm Doctor Van Helsing." She goes, "Jonathan's dead, isn't he?" And he's like, oh, "Well, yeah. well, yes. That was part of the reason I was coming here." <laughs> yeah, and they're like, "How did you know?" And she goes, "I just knew. I just knew." What I love is when they bring that up later and they're like, but how did she know he was dead? And, and Van Helsing's just like, it, premonitions happen, whatever. Uh, <laughs> that's not that part of it, that. It's like a common knowledge thing where he goes, well, he goes, well, it's been known to happen with women. Yeah. And, yeah. and you're like, okay, all right, movie. You know broads, am I right? <laughs> broads occasionally are psychic. Everyone knows that. I thought it was really weird then when Van Helsing did like a full five-minute set about the differences between men and women. Let me tell you about women. Uh <laughs> Has anyone else noticed how women love to shop? Huh? They're always shopping what? for shoes. Why do they go to the bathroom in groups? It makes no sense. Meanwhile, men are sitting around drinking beer saying, what's with, up with that? <laughs> Am I right, feathers? Am I right? <laughs> anyway, I'm Van Helsing, and that's been my time. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting the light. Uh, <laughs> getting the light. <laughs> Vampire coming to Hunter, the stage but... now, he's he's a very different comic. He's going to blow you away, Mr. Renfield, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Renfield, he does a he's a prop comic. He does things with bugs. You won't even believe it, Mr. Wait, Renfield. Wait till you hear his laugh. It'll haunt you. <laughs> By the way, no Renfield in this movie. No, no, and I mean he's not missed for this plot. I would say not for this plot. Uh, and I, I again that was a choice and i'm like well that's taking away one of the cool aspects of dracula this is having a very a stripped down streamlined 82 minute version of dracula you know? you know what's really missing from this movie that i don't think was a smart choice i mean renfield okay i miss him but whatever mm -hmm. dracula has no motivation in this movie dracula i mean he there's just wants not to get ladies he just wants to get ladies. He's not even going to a different country. He's not trying to take over because he he's down the he's street. In his hometown. Yeah, he's right down the street. So this, I thought, was that's not a good choice. It's just like, hey, there's a monster in our town, and he's going to keep feeding on all of our sexy ladies until there's someone a, takes. There's them out. a dropped line somewhere in here that talks about, my God, he's looking to replace the woman that Harker killed, and you're like. Well, they and you're like, yeah, they, okay, I get. So he needs a woman. Seems to be there, you know. And it's like, uh, but he also says he's getting revenge, which is surprising yeah. that it's all this revenge. Well, he, need, he needs to he needs to replace that woman, and so he's gonna go after the people that were yeah. close to Harker. Yeah, I mean, I, I but it's really weak sauce it's, as it's, far. It's as... pretty light. Yeah, it's it's more just like this guy's evil. Yeah, and Van he's an evil. And this thing. really is Van Helsing's movie. I mean, it is really, it, yeah. There's a there's a creature out there that just needs to be stopped. The, it's Hammer, so far here in the early days of their horror things, leaning on their ace player. They're yeah. just leaning on and pushing, and he delivers. But I mean, they're yeah, sitting there no, going, no complaints. And and we'll see Lee. Like, That's our money right there. That's our money. Yeah. And Christopher Lee is, no, but they just don't, they don't know what they got yet. No, and they will. I mean, they will. There's there's better Lee stuff later. Oh yes. Um. So yeah, he uh he comes in, and uh, Van Helsing kind of is like, well, yes, let me take a look at you, and he kind of does a quick like one side of the neck, other side of the neck. Okay, I've seen enough. Well, uh, yes, everything's going great, uh, Lucy. Can I see the <laughs> Holmwoods out in the hall? Yeah. How long has she had those marks on her neck? And they're like, well, uh, well, I, she said that maybe she'd gotten bitten. Yeah, those are vampire marks. Uh, and so immediately he said, he said, what I want you to do is close up every window and door to a room, cover the place in garlic. And they're like, I don't know, that sounds weird. He's like, she will die. I love it. Yeah. He sells it. He sells his superior knowledge here. He sells his commanding nature. And he sells how serious this fucking thing is. Yeah. So right off the bat, the only problem is, is that he's only telling the Homewoods. He should have had the the maid in there as well. Well, that's because also a little bit on the Homewoods because why didn't they tell the maid? Well, that's kind of true too. Um, 
but uh, because they probably wouldn't have sold it the way he does. Yeah. Uh, if if you have Van Helsing screaming, she will die to a maid. Um, yeah. She'd be like, uh, I don't care if she complains. Then I'm leaving the yeah. the window closed and leaving the garlic up. Do you want me to get Doctor Van Helsing in here to tell you that you will die? He'll scream it in your I mean, face. I don't know. I'll I'll, uh, I'll leave the he window. He flies closed. off the handle sometimes. Uh, he is deadly serious, which yeah. I want. I yep. want that in my Van Helsing. Absolutely. Uh, and so, yeah, so we see that they have put garlic everywhere in the room. All the mm-hmm. windows are closed, and this maid comes in because Lucy's losing it in this bed. Uh, yeah. she, and she can't breathe. Oh, my God, the garlic, the garlic. <laughs> and- it's just so... It's just so overpowering. She goes, well, it does stink in here. Yeah, yeah it really does. Now that you oh, mention it, it reeks. Thing. I wasn't going to say anything out of politeness, but yeah. You this, poor thing. You uh, know what? Let's get those windows open. How yeah. about that? Let, let me take some of these flowers away. Yeah, and she's like, perfect. Thank you. Hard cut to Lucy dead. I know. <laughs> Another one I that's kn- just like, and Seward pulling the sheet up going like, well, there wasn't anything I could do. So don't sue. <laughs> medical malpractice doesn't exist in this era so i'm off the hook see you later bye bye <laughs> i've done nothing anyway goodbye that's it for me in this movie <laughs> oh dear i thought when i saw dr seward that i'd have a bigger part doesn't matter must go bye bye <laughs> remember me for the next dracula movie <laughs> um and so yeah so he, <laughs> he's he's out of there and Van Helsing arrives, and he's like, what did I say? What did I goddamn say? Don't open the windows. Put the garlic out. And they're like, we did. I don't know what to. And then this maid is just like, well, actually, nah, I was the one who took the garlic out and opened I will the say windows. Even this bit player, yeah, even this lady, who does have a few more scenes, actually. It's not like this is all she does. Um, and she becomes a, a decent character in it. She delivers here. Like, I felt terrible for her. Yeah. She sells the regret. She's like, oh, God, it's all my fault. I'm sorry. I've killed her. And yeah. you're like, wow, man, that's great. Uh, I, Thank, I, you, I, Hammer. I Thank did, you, Hammer. I did want uh, I did want Goth, though, to just be like, nah, it's not your fault, but also you're so fucking fired. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I hope your papers are in order. <laughs> You'll be getting no letter of recommendation from me. The only thing I'll write to anyone is killed my sister. Um. <laughs> well, and you'd be right to do it. I'm a piece of shit. And the movie ends with her suicide. I Again, know. A, a and strange. then they, it, it ends there. And no mention of Dracula from here on. Really weird yeah. choices. <laughs> no, we the movie shifts focus to follow this poor guilt ridden <laughs> maid. <laughs> Uh, oh, uh, no, Arthur doesn't blame the maid. Instead, he turns this right back around on Van Helsing. He said, ever since you've met everyone, Jonathan's dead. Now Lucy's dead. It's got to have something to do with you. Leave my family alone, Van Helsing. You're yeah, a logic, death curse. His logic's a little faulty, but whatever. He's, <laughs> he's grief-stricken. Yeah. And what, Yeah, this is, once again, Goth's hard shifting into bereavement and just, like, uncontrollable grief. Um, yeah. cause he loses it for a good chunk of this movie. Uh, and then Van Helsing goes, look, you won't believe me if I told you what's really going on, but here's Jonathan Harker's diary. Give that a read and then call me. Yeah. That's not a bad tactic. He's yeah. like, I'm just going to leave this here. Yeah. I'm just going to leave this here. Walk away. Read it at your leisure. Give me a call. And then Van Helsing leaves and, there's a knock at the door and the maid goes, oh uh, yeah, there's a policeman outside. And this is where we forgot to mention earlier. We saw briefly saw this little girl, Tanya. Um, right. The maid's daughter. Yeah. And Tanya, <clears throat> they say, uh, they're like, uh, he's like, yes, uh, I found this little girl wandering in the woods and, uh, <laughs> just thought I'd bring her back to you guys. Um, She's got a crazy story, but I, I, I'll let her tell it. I, I've got to go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but that's that's it for my part. Do you want me to do anything? No? Okay, that's no, it then. All right. All uh, right. Do, I, do I just see, will they sign my, for the parking? <laughs> Great. 
great. You, you, you validate parking. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Yeah, I'm uh, done. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and, and they're like, what were you doing wandering around the woods? He's like, oh, Lucy came to me and said I should come out and walk around. Said she was going to take me on a walk. And they're like, oh, Jesus. Crazy uh, little girl yeah, saying that our yeah. beloved Lucy, who's dead, is walking around and inviting her to play and so i do like that arthur's like well i better check her coffin just to you know what? yeah just to just i'm gonna have a look just gonna have a little look see and see what's going on <laughs> and uh he goes out there and yeah the coffin's empty and he's like oh no and then suddenly she's there yeah oh no no again no first we see tanya wander into the woods again and lucy's like come on Let's oh, right, go right, have right. fun. And then as Arthur's exiting the crypt or whatever, then Lucy's there with That's Tanya. how the movie really does move us along. Like, uh, you know, it's sort of like the death of Lucy to revelation of her vampiric status is like bip, bop, bip. We're just there. Yeah. And, you know, there, there are things in the novel and so forth where it's a lingering, it's a drawn out thing. And there are police reports of a one mysterious woman who's preying on children. And right. I figure out, Oh God, that's Lucy. But here it's just sort of like, no, like a day later, she's already oh. trying to get the little girl. And then Arthur's there and, and she's like, Oh, Hey brother, how you doing? Yeah. I love it. She's just like going, yeah. Hey, yeah, I know it's weird. I'm up and around. And, uh, why don't you hug your sister? Come here. Ha ah, thanks. Yeah uh so oh and i love this lucy's like come here come on arthur g give us a hug and she starts yep. towards them and all of a sudden just from the side of camera van helsing's hand with a cross there is almost nothing that has me as excited in a movie as when uh he just like quick draws a cross dude the way they did that shot and the way they edited it yeah again goosebumps yeah fucking love that because yeah. it is exactly that it is you don't see him full body. Just the hand comes in with that cross, which yeah. I do like movie crucifixes. Either they're really ornate mm -hmm. or in this case, they're just like chrome crossbars, like yeah. this enormous shiny chrome yeah. cross that just comes in and she just the great. Like, hey. yeah. Oh, it's good. And then he pushes her back with it, pushes her back and then he presses it into her forehead. And it does. Is this perhaps cinema's first like uh, burning vampire? As flesh? far as I'm aware, yeah. Oh, it's good. And stuff. it burns, and he leaves the mark on her head of the cross. Oh, it's great. Oh, it's good stuff. Oh my god, it's such, you're just like, oh, <laughs> what a badass Van Helsing is here. I want to see actually, him in later I movies actually, where he's got the. I wish he had the cross in a holster, so he'd just be sure. like, Whoo. quick draw. Yeah, I did have to stop the movie at that moment just because it was too much. I was like, that's too good, and yeah. stopped. This and is... I, and then I had to walk out and get some sunshine, get some fresh air, like Doctor Seward said. Yeah, I came back and was ready for the rest it was, of the movie. It, I was overcome here. It's just just, yeah. just too much. It's too much too movie. Sometimes uh, good. Yeah. And so then, uh, yeah, uh, this is the scene where he comforts Tanya, and you're like, oh, Peter Cushing's nice. Yes. Yeah. It, it is. It he is wraps very... her up in his coat, and he says, "You look like a teddy bear now." Yeah. It's, it's very adorable. Sweet. It's adorable. He's looking after her, but weirdly, he has basically said to Arthur, like, yeah, yeah, she's now, she went back to her coffin and it, the sun's coming up. She won't get back out again. It's safe for you to go in there. That to, just to me was like, yeah, yeah, I, I think you'll be all right. I need to make sure this little girl is comfortable yeah. and uh, and knows that I'm a nice man. And so then he's like, you just stay here and, oh, yeah, hold on to this. And he gives her a cross. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I do like when he walks into the crypt and he's looking Arthur's looking at Lucy in the coffin and Van Helsing just says, you understand now. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, it is. It's great. He's like, you know, it ain't bullshit now because yeah. you, you're walking around and he goes, she he goes your ass. here's the good news though. Lucy can lead us to Dracula. And Arthur just is like, how dare you? You're going to leave her in the state so you can track down Dracula. And he's like, Van Helsing's just like, well, if you insist and he busts out his staking kit, yeah, but he does say he goes. Uh, there's the, he goes. That's not your sister, okay? Right, right. That's the shell, and it's being inhabited by just evil. Yeah. Um. So don't think of it that way. 
but he's and he's like i the fact that you could leave her in that state for one minute he's like all right yeah no you asked for this this is not gonna be pleasant either man (laughs) watch me go to town here we go and then as i wrote down on my notes he stakes her good he stakes her very good so don't worry folks lucy is not still on the prowl she got care and of. so she's screaming and we're seeing him bash it in and the blood is spraying and you're just like oh man this movie you're rules like, uh, like this is not your daddy's yeah. track and then you've got talk about the added performance you've got goth like against the wall in just distraught going like oh no no my dear sister yeah i love it I love him, man. He's like sh- covering his eyes with his hand. I mean, like, I can't. Oh. But then <laughs> after he's done with the staking, Arthur walks it, over to see a very it, it, peaceful looking dead Lucy. And he's like, oh, oh, well, that's nice then. I did think that that was not, not fair. Yeah. <laughs> because I was like, okay, all right. Yes, the that's a trope is like, okay, once they've been taken care of, mm-hmm peace and that's in the novel her face looks at peace yeah but she'd still be covered in blood yeah. i'm sorry well, like you see get all over ben helsing's hands and stuff like yeah. that just, oh let me just i'll just have to wash up uh jesus yeah anyway no it's still a murder scene over there uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh and so i do like though on this same point we cut to Van Helsing and Arthur inside, and, and he's like, here, drink this, and Van Helsing gives him a glass of whiskey or whatever, and Arthur's just like, no, no, I'm fine now. <laughs> I don't need that. <laughs> I'm all better. I got over it. You did the right thing. It's like, you know what? She is a piece. Yeah. I'm okay with all that. Uh, you got a little right there. You got a little blood. <laughs> <laughs> you have a little bit of my sister's blood yeah. just right here. Yeah. yeah you might. Oh, you missed yeah. a spot there, Van Helsing. Um... And uh, then the, he's like, he's like, well, what do we know about this Dracula? And and Van Helsing goes, well, from what we can tell, he could be anywhere between five hundred and six hundred years old. And uh, this is when this is when he does the thing about, well, can't he turn into a bat? He's like, I don't think so. People confuse yeah. it because of vampire bats. People know a lot about vampire bats. They don't know as much about these undead creatures. Yeah, because not a lot of people are are discussing them in universities. So I'm not exactly sure where I was educated. Yeah, and so he's. He, this is when he's like, "Wait a minute!" I'm the expert. I've picked up all this knowledge. How did he get here? Well, wait a minute. And this is when Van Helsing is finally like, "When I arrived at Castle Dracula, I saw a coffin being taken out by stagecoach. Maybe if we could find the address where that coffin was delivered, then we'll know where Dracula is." Yeah, this is an unnecessary scene in a movie that moves along. Yeah, pretty this is dark where it's just out. like, okay, so all of a sudden we have a little bit of a detective story here with Van Helsing. Yeah, they they go and weirdly, of all the things to transcribe over from the novel, there is a bit in the novel where Jonathan Harker and Van Helsing are trying to track down the locations that all the boxes of Earth dracula had seeded around london so they go to the the yeah. moving company that had moved and it is even in the novel you're like okay you wanted to show every step of how they well, okay this but this is not that this exciting is, this yeah. needs to be in the movie for one reason which is it gets the two of them out of the house so that dracula can get to mina yeah that's i think that's really why it's here more so than anything is like they need because they're like oh by the way mina uh we are going to be gone for the next day looking at looking into this whole address thing but you're fine yeah you're good here um but can I just say she's not and can i just say oh dracula is gonna be very happy to see mina yeah he's gonna get himself a homewood if it's the last thing he does yeah yeah here's here's the new one and yeah. he's like all right who will be my bride tonight? It's you, <laughs> Mina. I wanted one scene of him waking up in the coffin going, mm, who's going to be my bride tonight? <laughs> Let's see. Lucy was nice. Well, she's dead. Um, He's got his little black book out going, mm, who am I calling up tonight? Well, this is the same old town, though. I've never left, so I really, I'm running out. 
I oh, think I've had most they, of the women in this town. They keep getting staked. Oh, damn you, Van Helsing. Um, I hear there are a lot of women in London, but I've never been. That's too just far, though. I'm not much too, of a traveler. Apparently not. <laughs> I like to stay local. I'm a bit of a homebody. Uh, <laughs> I shop local. That's right. I support my local businesses. <laughs> They're daughters. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> and by that, I mean I totally killed the daughter of the local shopkeep. Yeah. Uh, you guys get it, right? You get it? Yeah, oh, God. Don't make me explain it. Oh, this is as bad as Van Helsing's stand-up <laughs> act. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Uh, they go to see the the shipping clerk or whatever who sent this out, and he's like, "No, no, not gonna give you that information. That's not allowed. That's pre that's privileged information." And then Arthur busts out a couple of bills, and he's like, "Well, maybe we could have a look. Let's see. All right, I can be bribed. I didn't mean I couldn't be bribed." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so meanwhile, they get the information, and then Mina, there's a knock at the door, and there's a little, <laughs> another random character in this movie, this little messenger messenger boy who's like, yeah, I got a message that says you're supposed to meet Arthur down at this address. And she's like, well, that doesn't make any sense. Arthur's in a whole other town. He's like, I don't know what to tell you, lady. <laughs> That's the message. <laughs> tell you what they told me. <laughs> How about a tip? Uh, I expect a bloody Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> and then Monty Python break in doing the Spanish Inquisition bit. Yeah, this was where it started. This was the this first. Was this is the first instance of it. Um, so they would have probably been just starting college when this is fifty-eight. Uh, yeah, or maybe halfway into college. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, so she's like, okay, oh, well, whatever, and so. Uh, Mina goes to the address that he, she was given to meet Arthur, which just happens to be the local undertaker. And she's wandering yeah. around all these coffins going, Arthur, where are you? Why am I here? And then you just see one of the coffins creak open and it's Dracula. Oh, and it is his badass white pimp yeah. coffin. Mm -hmm. That's right. And I'm glad. I just, glad him, I just want to raise up, take a look at Mina and go, you like my coffin? <laughs> I don't know if you noticed, but silk lined. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I did not skimp. I'm a yeah. count. Yeah. No expense spared, am I really? <laughs> <laughs> I've got a coffin oh, that's guy. Eerily perfect, Chris Lee. Yeah. Oh, my God. I love that little. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. That's, 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 that's the Christopher Lee. Uh, <laughs> that was his signature laugh. Uh, yeah. He did it in uh, the Lord of the Rings films. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's the the eye of Saruman. <laughs> if you uh, catch my drift, <laughs> I guess the eye of Sauron. Someone's gonna write in. Eye of Sauron. He was Saruman. Shut up. Yeah. Shut up, nerds. I to shut that down. <laughs> uh so then Arthur and Van Helsing have returned. Uh, they they're like, uh, oh, go upstairs and wake Mina. And the maid goes up to wake Mina, and she's like, she's not here! And then Mina just enters from the other side, and she's got this coat that comes all the way up to over her neck. And she's like, oh, I just went out uh, for a little walk in the early morning. Uh, nothing to worry about. I, I always like about the psychology of Dracula's victims, or I guess any vampire victim in film. It's like when, the, when he's there, when the vampire is there, the victim is under their, you know, spell. Mm -hmm. And so they can be drained and it's sexy and whatever. It's these moments where the vampire is not around and that woman is still fully aware of what happened, but she's playing it like, oh, I'm having an affair, but I'm just going to keep it on the DL. Because here she's complicit in her own eventual possibly being turned into a vampire. So she's got the high collar thing and she's... She's just being very like, oh, you know, I just been sitting around knitting. Yeah, I mean, so, uh, um, she is kind of having an affair with Dracula. I know what's I happening. Met a count. And they're, they're kind of playing it that way, which yeah. I I kind of like because yeah. it does 
it becomes this corruption fantasy where she's like going, you know what? I know he's taking my blood, yeah. but it's the most excited I've been in years. Yeah. You I mean, my God, no offense, but come on. Arthur, you haven't drank my blood in years. <laughs> I'm not supposed to look outside the marriage for a little blood drinking. Yeah. <laughs> you You're promised gonna deny those me? days were behind you, dear. <laughs> uh, so yeah, they're uh, uh, so they get they're, they're like, oh, that's that's great, Mina. Anyway, we we just came back for a quick second, and we're gonna run right back out. We got to investigate another lead. So they then go to the same Undertaker where Mina had right. gone, and. Oh boy, is this guy a jokey undertaker. This is tough, man. This isn't as tough as as a scene to come. But this is pretty damn tough and I'm like no one's amused. Just stop. Yeah. Just he just stop. It, the bits never end with this guy. I don't I don't know why they urge to put these characters in here. We had the guy doing the drunken toast last week and it's just it's like kind of I mean, all of this is a nod to Universal. They're they're yeah. call, they're following the playbook. It's like, well, we need a stupid comic relief character for a half scene. Well, and the only person who ever made that work really was Whale. Like his movies did have that kind of thing, and they were they were actually kind of funny. Yeah, it's true. But, but the, the other... entire movie making were fairly arch, so yeah. it's not like it didn't stand out because it was all of a piece. Yeah, the Hammer movies, both times this has happened, in both the times this has happened in both of these movies we've watched, I'm like, Jesus, I didn't remember Hammer doing this kind of shit. And I don't think it's the last time either. We'll see more. Probably not. Um, we'll get some more cut ups in the mummy or whatever. Uh, it's almost always like the it's the lower class folks. It's always a class distinction. So um, it'll be a lot of ditch diggers and a lot of like maids and so forth. And, the, and it's always like, that's sad. I'm like, guys, come on. Let's have some yeah. upper class twits as well. But it's almost always Ooh, like, I don't know. It goes on up there in Castle Frankenstein, but I don't like shit. <laughs> and you're like, oh, come on, man. <laughs> and so they go and he's like, well, yeah, the coffin was just right over there. Whoa. It's gone. It's gone. That doesn't seem likely. Anyway, that's it for me, everybody. Goodbye. Uh <laughs> that's for my time. Coming up next, it's Mr. Renfield. He's doing some crazy things with spiders and roaches. It's weird. It's the he's the hottest new comic on the scene. I never follow him. It's impossible to follow Mr. Renfield. He's always the closer. <laughs> but um. I've worked on this disappearing coffin bit for quite a while hope you enjoyed it <laughs> so then and the we, audience did not <laughs> then we've got van helsing with a map out trying to figure out where dracula could have gone yeah and he's like he could be here or there but he probably wouldn't go this far and at this point van helsing is straight up guessing right like <laughs> yeah, yeah he's just kind of like i'm flummoxed yeah. one thing i know for a fact is he won't circle back around to your home or anyone else in it. And I do That's like the one thing I'm absolutely positive about yeah. is that your home is safe and so is your wife. And I do like that <laughs> Arthur's like, well, there is that old neglected graveyard around and Van Helsing's like, oh, that's exactly where he is. Oh, that sounds, that is likely. And I know that's not where he is, but there is, there is a part of it's like, of course that's where Dracula would be. So I like that this movie actually is like, no, that's not where he is. Because you would expect the climax to be in an old, neglected graveyard. Right. Uh, and so they're, they're like, quick, let's go. I do like that all of a sudden these guys are Batman and Robin. You know, it's just like, it's, yeah. it's, it's Arthur yeah. and Van Helsing. Arthur is now fully on board yeah. and is like the the vampire slaying uh, Robin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's just he's just handing him, uh, you know, uh, gadgets and stuff, the other thing. He's doing acrobatic kicks at vampires. Uh, he's wearing little shorts. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Michael Goff in the Robin outfit. What do you think, Ben Helsing? Oh. I think this could be my new look. Um, oh, God. I, I wouldn't. Um, <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of crotch, Arthur. Um, <laughs> so Arthur's like, oh, before we leave, Mina, here, just take this cross. And she's like, I, you know, I, I, he's like, oh, just take the cross. 
it's a good little bit. It it's is. a good little scene. And she's like, ah, oh, I don't know. And then he forces it in her hand and she goes, she passes out. Yeah. And then when they, then, they reach over and they open up her hand to see the fire and open and find the burn, the cross burn. And they're like, holy shit, look at her throat. Yeah. And then, uh, Van Helsing is like, well, this is great. You made me stake Lucy, but now Mina can lead us to Dracula. And, and Arthur's like, I guess that makes sense now. Oh, fine. I guess one of the women in my life is going to lead us to Dracula. Fine. <laughs> so then we have Arthur and Van Helsing just like staking out the house, basically, waiting for Dracula to show up. No, we haven't. Have we already had the, the scene with the, the cart? No, that's no, that's to come. The cart? The the cart's chase scene. Oh, no, that's that's when they go back to Castle Dracula. Which okay, is yes. okay. a bizarre. There's some weird stuff in that sequence. This this scene that we're on now is is throws some shade on the Van Helsing is brilliant thing mm-hmm. because they're like, well, here's the deal: um, keep her in her bedroom, lock the doors, and that has the two windows, right? Looks out into two different things. Yeah. So we'll we'll patrol the grounds. Yeah, and I'm like. Dude, if you're convinced Dracula will be coming there, you be in the room with her. Yeah. Why would you be patrolling the grounds? <laughs> I would love. I would have loved to see where Van Helsing is like in the closet, and Dracula <laughs> comes in. He's just like, aha! aha! Which I know that sounds silly, but it would have been a better tactic because guess what happens? They're out patrolling the grounds all night, and Lucy, uh, Mina is yeah. essentially drained. Almost completely well, killed. Well, yeah, because Mina comes out of her bedroom, and, and there's Dracula just standing in the middle of the house, which is cool because you're like, how did he get in there? Yeah. And then she's just like, oh, I was hoping it would be you. Come on up. Yeah, and so he comes up, and then, yeah, this is where we definitely get some smooching and some neck nuzzling. Yeah, and weirdly for the time, we actually get a little wacka wacka guitar going. Yeah. <laughs> We well, get some full on seventies porno guitar. He does. He does kind of layer on the bed, which I did think was like, whoa, wait. I mean, like, a, a, so tame by today's standards, but a million times farther than uh, a Universal movie ever got. Yes, we are definitely um, looking at this as it's from its period, and yeah. for its period, this is steamy, steamy stuff that they weren't doing. <laughs> Once again, it's just that guy going, oh, mm, God, "Honey, I'm glad we." Uh, came to this movie tonight <laughs> uh, didn't you need to go to the bathroom before no don't worry i'll, I'll just go right, go right here don't worry that. <laughs> again it comes down to someone going number two as he's in the theater because they can't be bothered to get up and leave <laughs> uh, yeah that took care of itself <laughs> you know what I, it can wait it can look oh look at that and he's like yelling at the protectors can you back it up like Two minutes to play the game. It back. Just two minutes. And he's just watching. And then going, going, God, I wish I was Dracula. I wish it was, well, I don't know, like a rewind button. That's science fiction, though. That'll never happen. If, if, we, if we could somehow back the movie up and then, like, pause, pause it. it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> And that's it. The VCR invented by creeps. <laughs> actually, I think that actually is, is how we got the VCR. Oh, yeah. uh, rewind. What a dream. Uh, oh, my yeah. So, uh, Oh, yeah. So he, he, he does this. We then cut to... <laughs> you want to talk about them not having money. What is just some shrubbery and a black background that Michael Goth is climbing his way through, which I love. And he hears a scream, and so you think, oh, my God, he heard Mina. And then he just looks, and it's an owl. And he's like, oh, silly owl. Oh, jump scare circa 1958. I love you. It was just an owl. And then he goes right back into crawling through that same shrubbery. Because... Because maybe Dracula's you're, hiding in the bushes. You're in the knowledge that his wife has not been drained of blood upstairs. Yeah. <laughs> I just love, like, what is he doing? He's like, maybe Dracula's hiding in here. 
<laughs> That's probably where he is. Come on out, Dracula. He's got like a... It's like trying to get a cat out of there. Come on! Are you, are you crouching somewhere in this shrubbery? <laughs> I'm almost positive. Dracula, you... Are you just... That's you. <laughs> you thought I wouldn't see you with that branch in front of your face. I know you anywhere, Prince of Darkness. <laughs> so, uh... Then... <laughs> Then they, uh, they they come in, Van Helsing and uh, Arthur come in. They're like, well, sun's almost up. Dracula didn't show up. Yep, no sign of Dracula tonight. Uh, and then, yeah, they go upstairs and, uh, oh, my God, Mean has been almost drained of blood. How it's, did again, we miss a fairly, this? A fairly graphic shot. She is splayed out on the bed, bloodied neck, mm-hmm. uh, just like thrown back. Like uh, for half a second, again, I haven't seen this movie in years. I'm like. They didn't just kill Mina too, did they? Uh huh. We're killing no, everybody in this movie. Um, Victorian time blood transfusion, love it. which again, that's right from the novel. Love Van Helsing love. doing this blood transfusion. Yep. And so yeah, uh, Arthur is giving his blood to Mina, and uh, there's a it, it, there's a lot of it. There is a lot of blood transfusion here, yep. uh, and and. Cushing's really selling you that he knows what he's doing. He's looking at shit. He's measuring stuff. He's going. Yeah, he's squeezing a little bulb to move the blood. Yeah, and he's and then yes, look at this. Yeah, and then uh, then Goff is like, well, I get, he sits up and he's like, whoa, 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 hold on. Yeah, you take it easy. But I have to admit, even though they did give some, you know, acknowledgement of, oh, you would be very faint. Yeah. He then he's like, take it easy. He's like, oh, you're right. And then he's fine. Yeah. Then he gets up and he's just walking around. I'm like, no, I think you'd be pretty wiped out. <laughs> no, he just he didn't he even just get needed that second. He just needed that quick second to to. He didn't get the cookies and orange juice. Yeah, he, no, no. He needs uh, something there. Yeah, because uh, he gave a lot of blood. I think from the look, he of it. gave a lot of blood because yeah. she was basically empty. Yeah, and uh, and so this is where he's like, how did he get in here? Maybe he can turn into something. Maybe he can. They're like. Oh. It's possible, but probably not. Uh, and so, uh, and and there is just one line where he's like, Mina is taking the blood very well, so it's all looking good. And then, yeah, they're talking about it, they don't know. And then uh, they're like, yeah, how did Dracula get in here? And then they say something about going down to the cellar, and the maid's like, oh, I can't do that. Mina told me never to go down to the cellar. Well, they're like, um, well, you know what you, you still... Oh, you need some you wine. Need to, that was it, yeah. You need some wine to recover from yeah. that. And he's like, going, well, I, I will have to get another bottle. And he says to the maid, like, go down to the cellar and get us another bottle. And she goes, I'd love to, but the mistress told me not to go down in the cellar and I don't want to fuck up. You know, I've disobeyed before and look what happened. And Van Helsing is like, like, oh, Jesus, the cellar. And then it's a full-on, like, athletic bolt. Like, yeah. like, quick. It becomes a Batman moment of him leaping to his feet, running yeah. to the door and running down the stairs. Quick, Robin, to the cellar. Indeed. And there it is. There's the coffin. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, coffin is there, but it's empty. <gasps> and so, and then I like Van Helsing's like, Damn, he's not here. And he, ru- he starts to run over. He's like, No, wait, 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 wait. And he pulls out a cross and throws it in the coffin. He's like, Yeah, and then he can't come back there. That'll be pretty sweet. I'm going to leave this Dracula a little surprise. Um, but again, that's from the novel, too. I'm digging it. Yeah. In the novel, though, he was putting um, the host, the little crackers. Right. Because the, the, those are sanctified, and he would put those in the dirt. Yeah, exactly. Dracula can't come back. Mm-mm. Can't go. It's um, uh, now sacred. I liked when they were just burning coffins in, in some of the Universal movies. Just like, I know. blow it up! But... But that's your thing. You just you love fire. I love to watch and, it burn. I know you do. I'm transfixed by the beauty of the flames. Um, <laughs> so uh, uh, I do like for this brief moment, Van Helsing can't get out of the cellar. He's like, what, yeah. what the hell? What? God damn it! Uh, and then Arthur comes and just lets him out. Um, and uh, yeah, Van Helsing. And so then. Uh, the maid is hysterical because she's like, and, you, you, and, I, and he came, and he went, and Van Helsing starts shaking her and slaps her across the face. He goes, no, what happened? Basically, Dracula came in and picked up Mina and took her away. That's exactly it. And again, um, all right, I do love this movie, and I had a lot of fun, 
But third act really tanks here. I mean, again, I said before, Dracula had no master plan. He's not a supervillain in this. It's just sort of like, I just want some more ladies, and I'm going to get revenge on the guy who took one of my ladies away. Um, so that's not great Dracula motivation. And then the third act is literally Dracula. This is way too similar to House of Frankenstein, where it's like, I'll get in a cart and run really fast. I uh, hope I get home before the sun comes up and I've stolen a lady. And I'm like, really? This is this is how Dracula's going to go down? This is um, So we now get the cart-to-cart chase, the carriage chase. Oh, boy. Oh, man. This scene is wild uh because all right we get so okay so we have well, let's see i want to check my notes here to make sure this is right oh well so somehow he goes the only place he'd be headed is back to castle dracula uh and right so then that they means- they take off in their coach and they Im- almost immediately find a dead coachman and somehow arthur goes he's been dead for a half hour how the fuck no that's, that's van helsing is it van helsing that. I thought it was yeah. Arthur. No, they're both leaning over him, but Van Helsing's the one that actually says, I mean, because he goes, yeah, he, he's been dead for about half an hour. So I'm going to say maybe Van Helsing, being Mr. Science guy, maybe Mr. Medical guy can go, yeah, he's this warm. It's been about half an hour. Okay, okay, all right. All right. That I mean, still is pretty goddamn good on oh, yeah. Van Helsing's part to be able to just know oh, that. Sure. But Yeah, it's nonsense, but whatever. <laughs> I mean, but sure, it's our sure. nonsense. It's it's, it's it's our nonsense. What's coming up next is a scene that I can only assume was a huge influence on Harold Ramis during the writing of Stripes. Because it's hundred percent that scene it, from Stripes. It's the exact scene from. It is the exact scene because there is a toll keeper. Yeah. On so this road, Dracula a, is coming flying down this road, and his he is. The, the horses he's he's driving the coach yeah and the, yeah this toll keeper is like laying down and he's like what's all this then uh and he comes here's out. here's the crack yeah he comes out to find his guard rail broken and he's like Yay! and he's like oh, are you oh so then we have comedic troll booth guy yeah fixes the pole ties it together but uh-oh here comes Van Helsing and Arthur, <laughs> and they, he gives they're, yeah, the they're, big, they're, like, they're... comedic take of "Oh no!" no and dark, ducks out of the no. way. No, and it is the exact scene from Stripes. Yep, it is. It's the exact. Scene. It's the. I mean, I was like, "Where is Joe Flaherty as a Russian, yeah, guy?" And I'm just, I'm also just going, "What happened to this movie?" <laughs> I know this doesn't work at all. I oh, was this not is happy. A disaster. Not happy to see this so close to the end of a of a thrilling film. Yeah. But um, anywho, so they chase him all the way back to Castle Dracula, and it is a race against time. It's a race it against is. the sun. So, so Dracula gets out there and he immediately starts digging a hole and he's gonna what? bury Mina. What? In it. This. I feel like he's just like oh, I gotta bury this woman. God damn it! Uh, I mean, I'm trying to think of vampire lore. I'm like, has she turned? She hasn't died yet, but yeah. apparently, this is his way of preserving her till she does. So, he's, he's, so he is frantically he's... digging a grave, <laughs> throws her in it while she's still in, and he does throw her in. He it. does throw her and, in it, and then he starts. He kind of starts to wake up. She starts to wake up as he's shoveling and he, dirt. And he's shoveling dirt I think on her. I, I think I would wake up by being roughly thrown into a hole, but she seems pretty kind of out of it until yeah. the dirt starts coming down. She's like, "What's this now? Just let what? why just am let I the under- dirt shower over you?" Um, but he doesn't have a chance to finish. No, because this they is actually my favorite moment is when Van Helsing and Arthur show up and he sees them and he's just like, "Oh shit!" and he drops the shovel and starts running. <laughs> Again, this is where I'm like, oh no, I didn't want this kind of an ending for the movie. Though there are good moments to come. Oh, the the what, once we get into the castle, I think stuff's good. But just I did find it funny the way he's just like, oh god, got to cheese it. It is like, uh, get rid of the get rid of the shovel and run. <laughs> it's like the yeah, cops are at not, the door no. and Dracula's dumping his weed down the toilet. Oh god, <laughs> it's exactly it. Just be cool, Dracula. Just be cool. You've already got two strikes, Dracula. Come on. 
<laughs> they can't prove anything was here. They can't prove anything was here. No, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about, officer. I, I don't see any weed. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so he runs into the this castle. This idea is fake. It says you're 600 years old. <laughs> what? No, I swear it's real. It's totally real, man. <laughs> Oh, He's got Christ. a tribe so, yeah. license from the Middle Ages. So essentially, Arthur is off the hook because he's going to run to his wife, yeah. uh, which he does. So that leaves. This becomes a mono in mono. And this is where Van things Helsing, get good. Yeah, Van Helsing chasing Dracula yeah. into his own castle. Dracula bolting upstairs. Yeah. Uh, wait, he didn't bolt upstairs. He's still downstairs. But there's there's like a leap and tackle kind of thing. Oh and yeah. Then, we also get a desperate Dracula throwing a candle at uh, yeah. Van Helsing. Which was a mistake because Van Helsing uses that candlestick and another candlestick to make a cross. This is one of Bad my favorite ass. moments in any no, of the Hammer I movies. Think. Well, because well, first we get we get a full-on struggle. We get a, a yes. scuffle between them. Dracula gets the upper hand and he's choking Van Helsing. And Van Helsing fakes him out! Helsing does the he plays possum where he yeah. he pretends he's not passed out and Dracula is releasing his grip and then Val Helsing's like not so fast and <laughs> blocks him and I'm like fuck you get him Van Helsing get him and um now the sun is up and we do get a couple of glances of Van Helsing looking to the the curtained window yeah um and then we and get this awesome van helsing running across this long dinner table and leaping up at the drapes and tearing them down it's, it's a badass action hero moment he does he leaps up and pulls the curtains down uh and then sunlight and dracula yeah. is it's taking a little bit it hits his foot like, first and you see it like instantly crush you know and, and like burn and he's like ah! but it he seems that the uh the extremities go pretty quickly yeah <laughs> If it's hands and feet, they go very fast. And the I think rest his of it hand little... gets in their necks, but he's trying to avoid it and crawl out of it. And Van Helsing's but, like, "Oh no!" Because he's got his he's got his candlestick cross. He's oh. pinned Dracula in the sunlight. I he's love Dracula. the candlestick cross and him just forcing Dracula into the light. And Dracula is bellowing and and I mean the thing that Lee here in this movie with very little dialogue has been great at is just the presence of this being. Yeah. And I, as we said, it's like, he's not only a sexual being in this movie, he is a powerful bestial thing. So yeah, this is, I mean, Bella goes snapping and doing the, like the quick, oh, all that great, stuff. Great. I, just, oh, I love that. But this is Dracula going, no, and raging. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, this is how you want, this is how you want death. Dracula to go down. It's exactly. Like, no, <laughs> And then they do sort of the the turning to dusty things nice. and like skeletons in there, mostly nice. Yeah. When we get to the head, there's a lingering shot on one of the worst pieces of me. It's like sort of this. If they had cut it a little looking, soon, yeah, it needed to be cut a little bit sooner, and I don't think you would have noticed it as much. The head has has turned essentially to dust with maybe a skull under it, but these two cartoonish eyes, yeah, just kind of like poking out of the 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 ash, going, "Hey." Yeah. I'm like, no, that's not good. That's and then, okay. and then, yeah, we get, uh, we see that now the burn mark on Mina's hand goes away and yep. she and Michael Goth can be together and be happy. Cause, and then I just like this moment afterwards where Van Helsing's just like, well, that's the end of that. Like he's kind of goes to the window and looks out and he's like, yep, yeah, job done. Job done. Walks off. And then we get the ending of Flash Gordon, which I, I love. <laughs> Well, you know, this does... We get partial ending of uh, Flash Gordon. This does... I, If I remember Dracula, Prince of Darkness correctly, this ring he is key to, yeah. to the end, the beginning of that movie and how he comes back. It is very true. Um, so, yes, we get this kind of a, a great wrap-up shot of just... Uh, what I, I love, too, is that this uh, Castle Dracula is... Uh, this is like the main hall has a beautiful um, floor for some reason with the astrology symbols. That's the big design is the 12 signs of the Zodiac. And I'm like, what the fuck with Dracula? Is he a hippie? Um, so yeah, it's just the big circle with all the Zodiac signs. So hey, peace and love, man. Peace and love. 
and I'm just an Aquarius, okay? Yeah. I'm just an Aquarius with a Taurus ascendant, okay? But they they do a nice zoom in on uh, just the the ash with the ring sitting in the middle of it, and that's our last shot as then the credits roll, dude. Yeah. Well, I loved it. Don Hammer. Well done. I love this movie, man. I just really I, this fight and look, and especially like being a kid, this is this was my shit. Seeing Van Helsing and Dracula throw down, I was just like, "Oh, yeah." It it's um I I don't know. It's one of those things for me where sometimes if the movie is well done enough, and I've said this about superhero movies too, especially like the Marvel movies, they change shit all the time. Yes. If the movie itself is good, Mm -hmm. respectful to the characters, the characters origins, and it's not so far off the map. Because to me, the idea of elderly Dutch man Van Helsing and 600 year old vampire Lord actually in a physical tussle, that's just ridiculous. Yeah. I don't know though. When When you get to, uh, when you get to Anthony Hopkins bringing the Van Helsing, you're like, I think you could kick his ass. <laughs> again, again, if there's if there's all the religious artifacts and you've pinned them in sunlight or whatever it is, but I mean, it doesn't matter. This is a different Van Helsing and this is a different count, and and they have a physical aspect to their clash, which, yeah, it's it's a little WrestleMania, but I'm still down for it. I, I it it worked, and I'm I'm very very happy. Yeah. This movie makes me happy as well. Uh, I okay. just, I mean, and look, we just love Peter Cushing. Let's, yeah, we really do, man. Yeah. Cushing, Peter man. Crushing. Peter yeah. Cushing, our new <laughs> podcast. I just, there um, were so many times I was watching this where I just like Cushing rules, man. And I'm not saying that's a surprise for me. It's no, not, it's, it's but certainly I, not. I I've always loved this guy. I haven't watched. I mean, that's the nice thing about doing this podcast is I'm seeing a consecutive row of stuff by the same filmmakers or the same actors and what i'm liking about it is if i just saw a straight peter cushing uh performance in a movie over the course of last year or the year before i probably thought oh i love peter cushing but you see it sort of back to back and you're like going that guy always delivered he's amazing and as much as i love christopher lee and i do cushing is kind of fucking all-star until christopher lee's footing rises until he becomes what he becomes and yeah. we get wicker man and we get all kinds of stuff i'm like god damn you're great scaramanga oh scaramanga but we're, but we're not there yet the so, and when we do our next frankenstein um i want to do some little bio stuff on peter cushing as well wow but this this is the intro of of lee's dracula yeah. so i had to talk about lee and he definitely makes an impression even if he is in the movie oh, a lot and he- doesn't have a ton to do but he announces himself as Dracula. It is a fantastic performance as the you did, tagline. You didn't, you didn't you didn't say that. <laughs> I'm just going to pretend that you didn't say fantastic. That's what Hammer told me it was. Uh <laughs> Oh dear god. Do you, do you do everything Hammer tells you to? <laughs> you know what I do. And unfortunately if, if, they did if, if Hammer jumped off a cliff, would you jump off a cliff? I'd have too? to. I'd have to. That's that's my allegiance to Hammer. Um so uh <laughs> speaking of our next Frankenstein movie, next week is a Frankenstein movie. What? Yeah. That's right. Next week we get The Revenge of Frankenstein. Honestly, there's a little bit of a gap between uh because Dracula was extremely successful, but Lee was very reluctant to return. So it'll be a little bit before we get another Christopher Lee Dracula film. Not in the course of our podcast, of course, because we're skipping there are other seven movies though before we get back to Dracula for our podcast. Yeah. Uh are we doing Brides of Dracula? We are doing Brides of Dracula. That that's the okay. uh, that's in there. So that uh we, we get a Van Helsing movie. Yeah. Yep, yep. But yep. we don't we won't see Lee back as Dracula for a while. We will get yeah. Lee back in two weeks though as the mummy. Yes, we will. So, that's a whole other thing. That's a whole other thing. Can't wait thing. to see how they convince us he's Egyptian. Um, <laughs> I, uh, that's that's one I remember being quite fond of as a child is that mummy movie, but I have not revisited it in a while. I remember some uh, early spooky scares watching the, that one, actually. But again, I was very young. But I remember it scared me um, because this one, if I remember correctly, is much more obviously violent than... Yeah. than Offs. so there's a lot more body count and stranglings and so forth and i remember going oh mummy 
so it'll be fun to revisit. But what are we watching next week, John? Tell the people. We are watching The Revenge of Frankenstein. Yes, indeed. Yes, he's going to get his revenge somehow. I can't wait to see how. So we'll have Peter Cushing, but no Christopher Lee next week. I, be- I believe there is all- there are very few weeks on this show that we will not have Peter Cushing and or Christopher Lee. Yeah, there'll be very few. The, uh, the when we get to the um, Carmilla films, that's yeah. uh, or I guess the Karnstein, Karnstein uh, movies. Those are free of both. Yeah, um, thankfully, but there are the content stand- involved. I don't want to see the sexy Cushing and Lee movies. Oh, oh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so we're looking forward to that. Yes. Uh, more Cushing, please, is uh, now our tagline. Um, please, please sir. sir. I want some more. Yeah. It's never enough right. Cushing. It's never, never enough, enough Cushing. Cushing. <laughs> never enough Cushing for the pushing. Thank you. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I'm very tired. And I apologize for that terrible, terrible thing I just said. Yeah. Uh, so you would recommend this one to the people? Highly, highly recommend this one. Please, I'd say we're, we're two for two out of the gate here. Yep. But weren't we kind of like that with Universal as well? We were. We were. So I do. I do worry. But at least this time we keep the we, we keep Peter Cushing. So for we old, do. So I think uh, the, at least the acting is going to stay of a quality. Yeah. Yeah. And I really love his villainous yeah. asshole sociopathic take on I know Dr. I, I'm excited to get back to Frankenstein because I will say after the first one like a lot of these they start to bleed together to me so I don't yeah. know like I don't remember specific well I do remember Frankenstein created woman um, yeah. but yeah, like hard to forget yeah hard to forget. but Revenge of Frankenstein I don't have a lot of memories of what that is specifically well we're gonna find out we will and you will next week as well Uh, If you are one of our patrons who gets the show early, uh, thank you for your support. If you're not, and you're listening to this on the free feed, uh, then head over to patreon.com slash panel up where you can listen to this show a whole season ahead of where the free show is. So, Right. Lots of You'll be the cool kid on the block who knows what we're talking about um, that week. uh, That's that's, that's as good as my intro to the show was. (laughs) I'm fading a little. I'm really hungry. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, as am I. So let's wrap things up uh, for uh, this week's episode of Campbell and Jones Meet the Monsters. I'm John Campbell. I'm Brendan Jones. And remember, there are such things as monsters. Yes, monsters. So spooky and scary. I don't know. Did I just turn kind of Scottish at the end? <laughs> it's I don't a, know. It sounds like a Scottish like a Vincent Price to me. Yeah, yeah it's kind of... <laughs> <laughs> I, I like, it with it. I like this character. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>